let's get into this game. So we have CGA coach Greg Adams and a gentleman who I believe his name is Hafiz. We will see how it's pronounced and we shall get into this game. I'm also the buddy Ryan of this. I'm on the defensive side of the ball, but, gotcha. but I am the coach. I was a coach by profession at, yeah. at one point. What did you yes. coach exactly? Uh, women's basketball. This is why I... Hey, shout out to coach number one. He always shows up looking like a coach. He, you know, he, he didn't, he not, he not about to get suited up and do all this extra stuff. He show up looking the part. Shout out because the brand is on point. He said he used to coach women's basketball. That's fascinating. You know, I like him tall and thick, so I bet he saw some of that. I bet he also saw some horrendous uh, behaviors in terms of immorality, because we all know women who like women's basketball often like women. Carrying on. I know oh. so much about women. I've traveled with women, flew, hotels, all of that. I spent yeah. time with a lot of women, and before I, you get started here, yes. this kind of what leads me into knowing a lot of what goes on behind the curtain. Gotcha. We're going to revisit that, yeah, uh, these, we'll these WNBA-type <laughs> women out there. I guess the coach and I have a lot in common in that he was dealing with women's basketball, and I've been dealing with women in the game. Now, one thing I will say is the women who play women's basketball probably are not the ones we want, right? Uh, but let's go ahead. He definitely has some uh, time on us. He has wisdom and experience. And he's a realist. So let, let's see what the coach has to say. Who this guy is, by the way, just side note, I don't know. Uh, we shall see what's up with him. Are they really women? Well, uh, that'd be a good, we'll get that'd into be a that. Story. Uh, we'll get into that. And then our friend Hafiz here from The Roommates. You know him. You love him. He hosts a hot podcast uh, called The Roommates. With your, What's your partner? What? Uh, Chris B. Love. I haven't really spent time with Chris, but yeah, I spent yeah. a lot of time with Hafiz. Yeah. Uh, you also own a men's dabonair clothing company called the standard yes sir and if i could summarize you you just want to help men improve it in life 100 percent. yeah shout out to hafiz I, i'm not familiar with him i've definitely heard of the roommates podcast not ever watched a, an entire episode but i've seen a clip here and there and one thing i like off the rip about the gentleman is that you know unlike some frauds in the past that we we are familiar with you know the gentleman actually uh, according to the host, owns a clothing company, which he is representing. Similarly, you'll see, you know, I got the embroidered tee, and this is representing a company that I own. And so you're teaching entrepreneurship. You're also, you know, doing something that is true to you. So shout out to him for that. I'm, I'm always happy to see that, especially in folks who are a part of uh, what people might call disadvantaged groups. Uh, so shout out to him. Much respect there to the gentleman named Hafiz, wh whom I'm not familiar with. I've never met in full disclosure. Um, so that's good. Uh, anyways, and, and for those of you who want to start business, uh, I think the link is in the description to book a consultation. Actually, it might not be, uh, but you can just book that at marquetism.com. Talk to a real businessman and give you real advice. On Cash App, Khalil said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And Ricky said, you are appreciated MVP. Thank you very much, Ricky. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about being here. I got to be a little closer to the microphone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you're really loud in my microphone. At, I'm, yeah. I'm not loud in my head. So you guys can Let's take Adam down a little bit. Turn me down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys energy. are killing me. Um, okay. But now, of course, man, I think, I think to me the, the biggest thing that I'm really consumed with in this space is I feel as though there's a lack of actual quality advice. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people who make content to make money, um, and that content may you can say that again. I almost want to like rewind that back. In fact, there's almost no credible advice. And ironically, the most fraudulent persons are being followed. You have people who have been broke for the great majority of their life, yet they're teaching you how to become wealthier. They're giving criticism on people's startup ideas when they've never started a business, not realizing that their YouTube channel is not a business and YouTube actually owns them. We've observed this with Sneeko. Uh, for example, he got canceled uh, on YouTube and now we see that he's trying his best to pop up on the YouTube channels of others because now he's left with essentially nothing uh, because he didn't own any portion of his platform and he was primarily making money just through those ad runs and that was his issue. You know, he wasn't diversified. People talk about diversifying your stock portfolio. He didn't have diversified income and now he's kind of like, you know, going on all these rants about censorship when really your biggest issue is that your money then slowed up. I mean, let's be real here because there's only one actual revolutionary on all of YouTube. It's the big homie. No one else do you see actually training and spending time in person and getting things done for the good of the society. You're fat. 
that's a biological fact, right? You should debate more often. Well, the problem with a guy like me is I'm like the boogeyman, you see, because you know, it's like Floyd in his prime. It's, it's like Tyson Fury right now. No one really wants to get in the ring with you. You see, I'm always, I'm always ready to get it in, but nobody wants to smoke, and for a good reason. So if you, if you line them up, I knock them down. I give the whole internet permission to bring me someone of comparable level or bigger in terms of audience, and I'd be happy to host them for a debate be my pleasure. And in terms of the skinks and scallywags, they don't even have to have an audience. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll devour them for free. As long as they're not butt ugly, right? Because no one wants to look at that. He writes, I think you're a better debater and are more qualified than most of the, than 100% of the manosphere. Name one person in the manosphere who, who considers himself to be a part of the manosphere that has comparable credentials. Not a single person. In fact, the, the internet I find to be so laughable. I mean, consider this. You got people who call themselves passport bros. How is it that they're the passport bro, but I have maybe 30 times more stamps in my passport? How's that possible? That they're the passport bros. They've only been to four countries, which are all the countries that are dripping with prostitutes. You know, Brazil, Colombia, Dominican Republic, and probably one other that I forgot. That's the only, those are the only places they've been. I'm over here trying to figure out how I can get into Turkmenistan. People are like, what's Turkmenistan? Yeah, I'm trying to get to Ashgabat. It's kind of hard to get a visa, you know, the current dictator over there. He don't like people to come in. I'm trying to figure out that because I didn't win everywhere else that you want to go. But they the passport bros. Internet's terribly phony, but the great tragedy is, is not how phony the commentators are. The tragedy is how brain dead the audience is. You see, if the audience required realness, then everyone on YouTube who's wealthy and popular would be real. But the audience would take whatever you give them, you dig? That's why I always tell you, vote with your feet and vote with your dollar, you know? There it is, carrying on. You caught up? Yes. Let's get it. Here may not be benefiting men in the long run. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I just wanna, I wanna genuinely see lives transformed. And um, that's what we're excited about. That's what we're excited about with the standard. Mm -hmm. Actually seeing men's lives transform. It's not just about a bunch of characters on the internet sharing their ideas. It's actual real human beings that you're seeing their lives actually improve, actually become better. And so to me, that's- Damn, another sleeper. God damn! This is what killed me about the internet. You know, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Every now and then if I edit some of my own content, I watch it back and I'll even chuckle because it's, it's good work, it's good product. Because the product is the entertainment. The product is the education, the passion. I listen to these guys and I think, ah, why? Is, you people say life is short. I'm like, maybe life is too long. I'm listening to these guys, maybe, Maybe I don't want to live. It's so boring. It's excruciating. Good. And these are these guys motivators? They motivate you guys? Whoo wee. These guys are night quill. Yeah. And that's no disrespect to him. You know, if I saw him in person, I'd shake his hand. I'm sure he's a very successful, happy guy. But he's a sleeper to listen to. God. We have very sent a he probably said peace to the saints. Hope you're enjoying your world travels. It's satisfying to see actual good people enjoying success for a change mm, preach. this increasingly deteriorating world that favors evil looking forward mm. to our consultation as well yes absolutely i'm looking forward to speaking with you as well Is saint that you're talking to tonight? uh yes okay. yes it'll be 3 a.m um okay. in calcutta time yes and, and in fact i'm always shocked at how many of us saints are around the world i was just getting out of the elevator yesterday and a indian gentleman approached me hey man i know who you are and, you know, we took a photo and had a brief conversation. I was on my way to a, a restaurant where I had reservations. But, you know, every time I think I don't have any fans in India or fill in the blank country I'm in, it, it always uh, turns out to be the opposite. So I better be more careful before I mess around and get PNB rocked, put in my real time location. But it's always all love and, and shout out to the saints around the world. You know, I always am truly uh, privileged to meet you all. Baller alert. Shout out to Carlo. Oh, double time, baller alert. Let's work. He writes, big up to the big homie. Appreciate the game. Peace of the saints. And you know, the reason you get unadulterated truth from me is the same reason you got unadulterated truth from Trump. Whether you liked it or not, you knew that he was stable enough in all areas of life that he could say what he wants. Right? Like, I'm not trying to be friends with anybody. I'm not trying to get onto the Roommates podcast, the DJ Vlad podcast, the No Jumper podcast. That's why when you see them and, and they're, they're spitting game and it ain't game, I'm going to let you know what it is because I'm not trying to be buddy-buddy and get on anybody's platform because I don't need it. 
Um, so, as I said, shout out to him for being a businessman, but goddamn, he's a sleeper. Carrying on. We have Lee is the Peace of the Saints tuition. Peace of the Saints. And we have another baller alert from Juan. Baller alert. He said Peace of the Saints tuition paid. Shout out. Appreciate the, the big bosses showing up today. Abundance in a real way. Yeah. And you know what? We have an uncompromising movement. That's a beautiful thing when you don't have to play nice, when you're that strong to where you don't have to play nice. That's different. That's really different. And in five years, mark my words, you're going to see like, wow, he was right about everything he said. He didn't have to do YouTube collabs to come up in the YouTube game. He didn't have to slap vibes with people. He did it off of pure knowledge, wisdom, and actually doing the work to help you make your life better. Doing the real work of giving you in, uh, education in person, linking you up with a real network, and that won over all the BS. You will see. Carrying on. Excited about the most. Sick, brother. And uh, we Sick spent some brother. time last time in Miami. Sick, brother. Suave-looking gentleman yeah, yeah, yeah. in the club. We are at my bar, Bodega in South of course, Beach. Of course. Came through. It was great. Shout out. Like, give him a baller alert. He said, we was at my bar in South Beach. That's real player. I like that. Shout out. I mean, like when you're talking about you know, don't talk about it, be about it. You were with a crew of men that were all uh, representing, let's just say it like that. Of course, that. of course. And then Ali, you know her, you love her, you're seeing her. Wife, mother, interesting story here. Former ICU nurse mm -hmm. turned OnlyFans superstar. <laughs> yeah. Proudly. I'm done. Yeah, um, I was looking at her face and I saw she had them duck lips, them duckers. When I saw she had them DSLs, and I ain't talking about old school internet. That's what they used to call it, DSL, right? You used to get cable internet, dial-up internet, and it was DSL. Yeah, yeah, that's before your time, youngin. Anyways, when I saw them lips, I was already suspicious. Anytime you observe significant amounts of surgery, the chick is either not a chick, it's a dude, look out, it's a lady boy, duck, run, hide, or, ah, it's a super thought, dun, 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 super thought, showing up with knee pads. Sad. Now, the good thing is she was probably a, a great nurse, right? Because nurses have that personality. They want to take care of you. And if she has the love in her heart to say, you know what? Just so I'm not slobbing down sausages with flat lips, I'm going to go put some fix a flat in my lips so they're nice and juicy when I wrap them around the sausage. Very considerate of her. Thank you. Okay, we have on PayPal, Elias said you should debate destiny. He is a leftist streamer that's in open relationship and has been on Fresh and Fit podcast in the past, mm. which you should react to, by the way. Mm. And he thinks he's qualified to debate dating and relationships. I'm sure you would shred him to pieces. I'll shred any one of them. The thing is, I message them and they don't reply. Like, for example, I just messaged Rizza Islam. No reply. Um, because before I discuss someone, I always want to let them know, like, hey, I'm going to discuss you. If you'd like to represent yourself, feel free to show up as a man. I'm going to discuss you regardless. But if you'd like to present yourself, please do. Now, I'm not saying Riz Islam is scared, but I'm letting you know anyone I've ever spoken about, I've reached out to in advance in every single case. It wouldn't matter if it was Barack Obama I was going to discuss. I reached out in advance. But all the same, you guys can reach out to these folks, give them the invite if they say yes, you know, link it up. Everyone has my contact info. Uh, I'm not hard to find, but a lot of these folks, they act like they don't hear me when I shout. You dig? And I know that I'm the, the talk of the internet because every time you hear someone say something, you know it's like, dang, I could have sworn the same the center said that already. Like notice, for example, DJ Academics. I was the first person that said he turns up on females, but doesn't act that way with males. Then you heard Abba and Preach say it. Then you heard everybody else say it afterwards. Afterwards. But it's the big homie popped it off. You dig? It, it, that's how it go. I am the innovator. Ain't nobody out here thinking. I'm thinking on everybody else's behalf. They just repeating it. I am the puppeteer. They are the puppet. I am the ventriloquist. They are the dummy. Now, Josh writes, I got into a rut and I'm now back on the grind. Nah, I don't get on the grind. Get on the glide, my boy. Enjoy it. Skate. How do I get to a dollar with no money in a poor economy? I have a chemistry degree and need work as soon as possible. Well, I think that's part of your problem is your mindset. What poor economy? We're not in a poor economy. If we're in a poor economy, look, check this out. This morning, oh, and happy Diwali to all the folks in India and all the Indians around the world. Happy Diwali. They have a lot of fireworks that go on during Diwali. Unfortunately, India being as it is, a lot of things are not regulated. So these fools are busting off crazy fireworks left and right. I don't even like to really walk the streets during Diwali because it's too lit, man. You got eight-year-old kids busting off M80s left and right. It's dangerous. 
So uh, I'm in my hotel, and it's about 4.30 a.m. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, God damn, like Putin in, Putin's invaded, run! Like, I didn't thought I'm in Ukraine out here. They busting off these loud fireworks at like 4.30 a.m. I'm like, God, when they gonna stop? They not stopping. What I do? I go ahead and uh, I'm on the internet like, what's interesting country to fly to? And as I said, I was trying to get into Turk, uh, Turkmenistan. I want to go to Ashgabat. Why? Because ain't nobody ever go there. I figured, let me pull up, see what's popping. Um, I say that to say this. If there's a poor economy, I wouldn't wake up in the middle of the night and say, I'm going to fly out tomorrow with almost no advanced planning and then just pay for everything as it comes. You see, we're in a great economy. If you were in my last conference and obviously you weren't there, one of the things we pointed out, and I think it's in episode one, it's about mindset. We are in both the best of times and the worst of times, and that statement is always true. You get to choose. I say that to say this. We're not in a poor economy. There's not even low employment rate. It's high, it's high employment right now. It's high employment. You can get a job right now. Yeah, there are companies that are cutting for sure. But we're in a strong economy right now. Although by technical definition, we reached a recession already because we had two consecutive term, uh, quarters of declining GDP, but we're still in a good economy. And you have a strong degree called chemistry. You can go into a lot of things. I'd love to go into pharmaceuticals if I were you, whether it's pharmaceutical sales, business development, product development, research. There's so many opportunities for you. So I would connect with the university you got that degree from, talk to the folks in career services and see if they can uh, aim you in a particular direction. But what you should have done before you finished that degree is went on some internships. And that would usually transition, transition to a job. Next. Okay, we had a purchase on Man and Woman brand, if you want to make a guess. Walton. Yes, oh, he made a... my favorite sweatshirt. Oh, really? The green with oh, he the got green. the green. Yeah. Shout out. That's my favorite one as well. That particular uh, badge as well, fully sewn, beautiful. Okay, we have one said, I want to live a comfortable life and find a wholesale, I don't know if he means wholesome, Japanese okay. wife in Japan. I'm in school for cybersecurity web design. Is this feasible? Everything is feasible based on who you are and what you're willing to do. You know, you could have just said, Marquette, I would like to fly to Russia, become a Russian, unseat Vladimir Putin, and then take over the world. Completely feasible depending on who you are and what you're willing to do. And, you know, we have different nature, different capability, and different willingness to do certain things. For example, I often hear people say, Marquette, I want to be an entrepreneur because I want more free time. You're going to fail. Give up. Give up. You're going to fail. Why? You see, being an entrepreneur is not about free time. It's about working a great number of hours at the beginning, embracing tremendous risk, and risking your capital embarrassment and various other things. The person who wants a vacation should not sign up for entrepreneurship because there's no vacation involved. You're having an inclination that's incompatible with the vehicle. The vehicle of entrepreneurship is for hustlers. It's not for slackers. If you want to work hard so you can rest, you, you're misaligned. I say that to say this. Yeah, what you're talking about, this is basic stuff. This is not you're not going to go down in the history books because you married a wholesome Japanese woman and live a comfortable life. You ain't going to go down in the history books for that. That's basic stuff. That's easy to do. Yes, you can do that. Go on. Get it done. Okay, we have Illy said, four months of my first corporate job as a service help desk analyst. Okay. Should I work towards being a system analyst or network admin? And then he sent a correction. He wrote systems admin. So I think he's saying should he work towards becoming a systems admin or network admin? Good question. So firstly, you should ask yourself, what's your ultimate goal? And then you should backward plan, making sure that it's aligned to your ultimate goal. And being that both of those titles don't sound particularly impressive, I'd go for the one that has more money attached, because I'm assuming that these are just stepping stones to your ultimate goal. But congratulations on your first gig and performing well and being ambitious. And truth be told, I would talk to the people who are more senior and say, hey, you know, how far can I get in this corporation? what is that job title you think I can get to if I'm like performing at peak over X amount of time and which titles align to that goal? Okay, on PayPal, Barrick's back. He said, if 3 a.m. is inconvenient for you, Saint, I'd be glad if we schedule a better time. Please don't hesitate to let me know. I appreciate that consideration and please know that the show must go on. You see, 
that's the difference between winners and losers. That's the difference between great men and average men is that we do not what feels good, but we do what is necessary to get what we want. We do what is necessary to win, which is to say, yeah, 3 a.m. is not an ideal time to have a meeting, but guess what? You book 3 a.m., I'm going to honor it. That's what it's about, me holding to my word, me delivering the goods, and me not taking mercy on myself. We have too much mercy on ourselves. That's why we underperform. We always want to be so nice to ourselves. Guess what? You know, between us, and I usually don't like to say things like this because generally you should never speak of your ill health, but you know, kind of had like uh, some, some issues. You know, I've gone through a bunch of countries and, you know, certain health standards are not there. And so sometimes the food runs through you. I had a, some unfortunate, uh, you know, f- situations. And I still didn't stop working out though. I still went and got my six mile run in and then got my 30 minute, uh, 15 minute jump rope in and then hit the weights regardless because I will show no mercy on myself. I will continue going. So I say that to say, yeah, I'd be happy to talk to you at our scheduled time of 3 a.m. and thank you very much for that consideration. And for the folks who do want to get some uh, business consultation or otherwise and want to do it while I have some time, you can book at marquetism.com. And then after that, I'm a hop on a bird. You did go to a new country. We still are looking to see where. Caught up? Yes. Carrying on. Yeah, I'm very comfortable with it. I exactly. Think I, yeah, I get a lot of hate for it, but I'm very comfortable with it. And I've, I've done a lot more since uh, just propelling my OnlyFans career. I also am the CEO of Wetspace, which is in crypto adult platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's a lot of things that I'm doing now that are vastly different than where I was. Obviously, two years ago, I was a suburban hockey mom. And so um, this is all new territory for me. But um, I feel like, you know, I wear it proud and I'm kind of a, a different, fresh alternative face to the industry and this is pure evil like when you're you're looking at this human this being right here i was about to say human being you're looking at this being right here this is pure evil and when she says she received a lot of hate good Uh, that's called stigma it is natural in the context of a civilization to condemn certain behaviors that are low and it is a good thing for the harlot signals the, the decline of any civilization, especially when they become prominent. How vile is it that we should exalt any person who is so low? Exalting them, but they're low. Strange. But let me tell you what is more evil than this woman here. Those of you who would consume this pornographic material and have the stupidity to pay for it, especially when she got a face like that. <laughs> Crazy. She must be a real slore. Who knows what kind of specialized content she got to be doing? Because I surely am not paying to see her naked based on her face. I'm not impressed. Shout out to Money Mindset, writes Peace to the Saints. I'm talking to this good religious woman. Zero bodies on paper would raise my kids and give me peace. Looks wise, I'm not 100%. She's nice, but I'm used to getting better. What's the move? Marriage? Good question. Number one, when you reference the term marriage, I'm always talking about marriage upon your word, not upon the law of these wicked governments that we have, whether we're talking about here in India or the United States, Australia, much of the West. So I would not marry any woman legally for it's generally a bad contract i saw someone in the comments earlier wrote marriage is bad for men no marriage is is bad for the one who is the greater earner and then if there's children involved then marriage uh and just government in general disadvantages men so even if you're not married you will be disadvantaged in the family court system so that was actually not quite accurate and this is one of the things you find that is uh, occurring within those who call themselves red pill these folks are often inaccurate they're broken-hearted little fellas who have not recovered from their trauma yet ironically they're always you know raging against emotionalism in the female we're going to talk about it anyways number one when you say that she's a good religious woman this must be tested over time i don't know how much time you have in with this lady Zero bodies, you don't know until you break the hymen. And I won't suffer any lies of saying, you know, hymens can break when you're horseback riding or when you're... No, hymens break from extreme force applied by a penis or your finger or your sex toy. They don't break for fun. I know I've broken one. It took some some serious poking. Um, So zero bodies, you'll, you'll get the evidence of that when the blood comes forward. He writes, on paper, would raise my kids and give me peace. That's a good thing. That is what most of us seek. Looks wise, you're not 100%. Well, 
Fortunately, the looks don't raise your children. And I can assure you, no matter how gorgeous the woman is, at some point that will have less of an effect on you. I know I've dated dimes my entire life, you know, since I was a young boy. Uh, so I promise you, I sometimes chuckle to myself when I see nerds say, oh my God, you cheated on that girl? How'd you cheat on her? She's a dime. Yeah, but she's not a dime to me when like, that's all I've been dealing with. Like, what are we talking about here? Anything you have an abundance of starts to mean less, right? If you have a lot of money, then a dollar doesn't mean what it means to a homeless person. So it's just a stupidity. It is immaturity. It is being primitive that causes us to endlessly pursue you know, certain aesthetics. Now, if we're talking about genetics and there's certain genetic traits that she fails to have that you want to pass on to your children, then that's a different thing. Uh, the genetics of beauty is not something I think that you can estimate. Uh, what's the move? Marriage? You know, if that's how you feel, if that's crossing your mind, but don't ever let her put that on your mind. That's where we go awry. Women are complainers and naggers, and they'll manipulate and complain and nag their way to the outcome that they seek. And so you sometimes experience an idea that wasn't your own. They didn't damn near pull one of them Jedi mind tricks like Leonardo DiCaprio in Inception, and they didn't dug into your consciousness and planted that idea, and now you think you came up with it. And next thing you know, you're on one leg, uh, one knee looking like a damn fool. Carrying on. I think people will be quite surprised with my, my, my past and my education and just kind of where I've come from. You're yeah, trash. I think yeah. you have a lot of advice for women out there no, you're and trash. for men Stop as lying. well. She's so, trash. Um, I know we're going to share some of that today. She's trash. You need to come through? And I hope you're wearing okay, socks. Okay, all good. Uh, Natalia in the house. She's always here. Hello, hello. You love her. You've seen her. You want her. People are DMing. I, people are DMing <laughs> me. She's irrelevant. Why are we making her relevant? Like this, what are we doing? Carry on with the show, my boy. And I hope you're wearing socks. If, if those are not velvet slippers, you need to have socks on, my boy. If those are not uh, boat shoes, you need to have socks on. Why is the camera still on this broad? Like, come on, dude. Let's get to the show. Like, we damn five minutes in. We didn't waste the time listening to these thoughts. Trip status and how you make your money. Ladies first. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I am a wife. I've been married for 21 You're years. You're not a wife. You're children. a slore. Um, and I make my money through adult entertainment as well as... I make my money through prostitution. Carry on. Through my other business endeavors, through wet space and um, running my own company. Yeah. Got it. Hafiz. Yeah. Can someone ever show me a woman who's made their money without doing two of the following things? I challenge you. I am a woman who's made my money without the following things. A, using sex directly or indirectly. B, making a product that is geared toward women, spanks, things like that. Or C, I was born into wealth and I use the kindness of others, namely wealthy people, whom I have pre-existing relationships with. Find me a female businesswoman that did not do those three things. I would be shocked. There almost are none. Okay, yeah, so Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Directed by Dries, he said, Baller he alert. He said, shout out to the big homie. <laughs> shout out to Jabri. Rob said, peace to the saints. Hope you're enjoying your travels. You got to check out the part where, have, I don't know how to say it. Hafiz. Hafiz talks about marriage contracts and prenups. He's gave a timestamp of 33 minutes and 45 seconds. So shall it be. I'll make a note of it now. 33 minutes, 45 seconds. On PayPal, we have Jordan said, Peace to the Saints. The topics discussed during the member only live streams on Patreon are certainly historic for the Sassin. The Sassin has been taking major strides recently. Mm, real talk. I totally agree. I mean, after all, what group uh, that you know of has their own court? Talk to me. And on Cash App, we have Johnny said, Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. Carry on. So, married and make my primary um, revenue through the Roommates podcast. And I didn't know, I thought you had a girlfriend. You're married? Yeah. Okay. How yeah. long have you been married for? Um, about a year. Okay. So this is all new. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. why this comes. So can what? Can you look up what ethnicity Hafiz is? I'm going to go ahead and say he's not African American. He ain't got the sauce. You heard me? He ain't, he ain't, he ain't African American. The sauce is missing. The so it's a turkey sandwich with no seasoning. Congratulations, Thank you bro. so much. Appreciate it. I didn't know. I didn't catch an invite. Nothing. <laughs> uh, coach, go ahead. And I'm single. Bachelor, what? <laughs> divorcee, and uh, I make money through uh, YouTube content. Why are you saying like that? And I'm single. <laughs> Coach, why are you saying like that? Shut up. But he said, and I'm single. Bachelor. Well, divorcee. 
I mean, that, that last part didn't sound that good, coach. But you know that. I know that. We all know that. But you got some game from it. We're going to talk about it. People are saying he's Nigerian. I haven't found. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Because I was like, where's the sauce at? Like, where's that, that, that African-American sauce? You heard me? Where's the soul food at? I ain't, it wasn't there. Coaching. He needs it. And so forth and so on. Got it. So divorce it. Divorce it. <laughs> All right. So that's where we'll start this conversation. Why repeat it like that? All of your content online, wow. and I appreciate a lot of it. I really do. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that you you talk about you don't date, right? You talk about uh, there's a lot of stuff you talk about, but just real quick, how long were you married? How long you been? Why, why is he so into? Like, why is he like talking to him like with his hand out like this? Like, it's such an intense topic. Like, bro, calm down. Like, we ain't even got into it. Nobody's lit. Like, why are you reaching out? This is an intense gesture. I low key would be like start unle- like you hear me like start tightening up my shoes like he want to fade what's going on right now, um, but yeah, I didn't know men are called divorcees. That sounds so like bad, divorcee. I thought that's just what you call women, huh? Interesting. That sounds gross. I'm single now. Uh, married for almost about nine years. It was just okay. a, just short of nine years. Respect. I got out before the valuable <clears throat> ten year clock in California, which uh, would have been very deadly for me. So I got out right in time. Financially speaking, that's where basically you get screwed. Speaking, you ten get screwed years? over at the ten year and one day mark. So oh, okay. I actually saw the light, and I was gifted an opportunity to leave that uh, union. So it was factually fantastic. Yeah. And you, how long you been single now? Uh, since uh, it's been about a decade. So okay, damn. Got you. Good Lord, bro. We're going to need to dig into what that mean, coach. Uh, it's been a deck. See, look, as a as a super player, single just don't look right on me. It don't look right on me. You know? Nah, uh-uh. I mean, just think about this, right? If you are valuable, l- let me let me flip it so you guys can understand, because I know we got some folks in the audience who probably they ain't soaked the ism yet. Let me flip this real quick just so they can accept this wisdom. Check this out. Say you see a woman. She bad. She bad. Okay, cool. Body, ha. Shaped like an ocho. Okay. Face, very nice. Okay, cool. Style, it's there. All right. She bad. Personality even cool. Okay. She bad. Now you go start talking to Shorty. She 22, 23. She in that sweet spot, fresh water, Fiji. You trying to take a sip. Wouldn't you be like curious, like, how are you single? That'd be your main question. Like, how are you single? Like, how's that possible? You're very appealing to the eye. You seem mentally sane. How are you single? You see, that question is coming up in your head because you know that she's too valuable for no one to want her. Hence, the concept itself of being single unto oneself is peculiar. You see, now it's one thing to not be married, it's another thing to not be controlled, but to be single and not have some women who regularly want to be around you and are down for your program and are signed up only to you, that's that's how you need to be living. That's playerism right there, but to be single, it's like, why ain't nobody trying to get on your program, my boy? Yeah, I wouldn't trust a chick single and I can't trust a dude that's just completely single. It it just ain't quite right. So like off rip, I'm like, ah. Now, before we even get on to uh, Hafiz, just first off, he ain't got the sauce. You heard me? So I already know he ain't really got his choice of what he want. You know, from a bread perspective, he'll be able to get them chicks who want somebody who's stable, a.k.a. gold diggers. Um, But he ain't going to be able to just take his pick off the swag alone. So he has to be well off. Uh, Because the sauce sauce is, no. This needs some seasoning. So he's newly married. And as much as that's the case, then he's required to uphold the goodness of this institution because he's participating in it. So undoubtedly, we know he's about to take a strong stance in favor of marriage. Very few of us can be objective and say, hey, I might be doing this, but it still isn't right. Uh, so we're about to get into it. Look at Goofball. He writes, this guy is a P. I'm an international businessman. But more importantly, what's the relevance to you? Unless you want to be a hoe. You trying to sell your booty hole? Shoot me a DM. Might be able to help you out. I've been in these streets for about a decade. Yeah. <laughs> in these streets. <laughs> and how old are you now? 
Uh, 46. 46. Yep. Okay. That's well, a grown you, man. You got right the young there. face and the gray beard. People don't know, man. People, <laughs> people all of a sudden, they come on and they're like, look at this 57 year old. And yeah. then I have other people say, I look 32 if I shaved it. I don't care. That's the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. Is I look can... at my, I always tell people, look at my chocolatey skin. That's going to tell you That's, how old somebody it, is. If I look at your face, I'm thinking 36. Right. Looking at your beard, I'm thinking 100. All right, carry on. Um, when, I, when I first heard this, I was like, who said that? And then they said it was you. It was something yeah. called protecting your meat. Have you heard about this? Protecting, protecting your meat. And Absolutely. meat standing for your money, your energy, your attention, and your time. And Absolutely. basically, you've said that all relationships are transactional and that meat is... That's, that's not true. So all relationships are transactional. If he's talking about financial transaction, that's clearly not true. If he's talking about there's quid pro quo, which is to say something for something, yes, absolutely. That is the nature of human existence. Even a relationship between a baby and a mother is transactional in as much as they're both getting something. You see, the mother is getting affection. She's getting the feeling that she's the most important person, the feeling that she's needed, wanted, and valued. The, the feeling that her existence on earth is relevant because something is dedicated and needs her. You know, the baby is getting sustenance and more. So yes, I mean, th this is a truism. A truism is something that is so blatantly obvious that it need not be said. So yes, it, there is quid pro quo in life and human existence. But if you're saying every relationship, romantically speaking, is a financial transaction, whereas one is paying and the other is receiving, this is not the case. Shout out to Zess. He writes Marquette Devon Byrne for president in 2028. On another note, CGA was ambushed as he wasn't informed that Hafiz would be there and that it was going to be a one-on-one -on -one interview. Oh, I see. Uh, you know, internet people, media people, if you don't know someone, you don't know someone, right? Which is to say, if you don't know the host, you don't know him. And in as much as that's a, a variable and unknown, his behavior may surprise you. It gets like that. But truth be told, of all the types of ambushes that occur in human life, uh, to be ambushed on media is, is not like you're being jumped in an alley. So I think he'll, he'll survive this just fine, especially dealing with Hafiz, because Hafiz is not the, the most masculine guy, as we can tell from his general demeanor. Carrying on. Is the value that you're given to women. So break down what this meat is and how can men protect their meat well the, the funny thing when you use that phrase protect your meat obviously people are going to think you know oh, yeah. what you know exactly what I mean? but <laughs> i try to use that as a metaphor to say uh you know try to show men where your value is a lot mm -hmm. of times people will give men an idea oh, there's other yeah. things that are included in this but it all boils down to especially when you get to a point of marriage what is your meat your energy that you're going to put in typically men give energy to women women pretty much doesn't they don't reciprocate that back I've never seen many men that spend a significant time with women and then come out energized, even in. <laughs> this man is hard on these floors, boy. Good Lord. Look, he didn't been CGA didn't been through something, man. And shout out to CGI. I consider him a friend. Um, look, we can only speak about the world or not. We can only most of us speak about the world based on our experience. And if our experience was challenging, then we speak of challenge. If our experience was pleasurable, we speak of pleasure. And so few human beings can see beyond their nose and as much as this is the case. I think there's truth in that. Yes, men will invest a variety of capitals into the female, whether it's money, it's energy, it's time, it's emotion. But the truth is that women who are interested in you will invest back all of those things and more. You see, love can have a woman sacrifice herself for you. And I do mean that in a literal sense. Love will have a woman throw herself in front of a train. Love will have a woman throw all of her money at your feet. Love will have a woman take any variety of sacrifice. The challenge is this, is one, did you select the right woman? That's number one. And in selecting the right woman, it has to be the woman who's going to lay down everything for you because number one, it's how she was raised. It's her true value. And number two, she views you as that ideal man for her, the superhero, her dream man. If you weren't that, then you're not going to get the best or the most out of that woman. And so I think the gentleman is speaking from a position of not having been that person in that woman's life. Not to say things don't change. They can. not But consider this. What most males do is that, you know, we say, oh, you know, I want a woman who's shaped like this and looks like this. 
And so what you do is you go and get that woman and you think you own her, but you're really renting her. And the reason you're renting her is because she is mated with a guy of her caliber. So the woman that's shaped like a number eight, gorgeous in the face, good personality, well, she's suited for the guy that's on the Barack Obama level of prominence or the guy who's on the Steph Curry level of physical prowess. But you are neither of those things, but you are able to get her for a time. You're renting her. And then when she finds that guy whom she believes is equally yoked with her, then she will go over to his side and submit to him fully and give him everything that she never gave to you. Now, should you be mad at that? No, you shouldn't be mad at that. You should just acknowledge that, hey, I was boxing above my weight class for a time and you should be thankful that you were even allowed to ride that ride because you were too short to get on that ride, but you're on it any damn ways. And now you're mad because the reality of animal life, I didn't say human life, I said the reality of animal life has taken its toll and you have been victim of that toll. Now, when I say animal life, I say that certain things just match up, you hear me? Every now and then I see a chick that's super thick. I look at her like, damn, Woo, what I wouldn't do to that. But Lord knows, I get, I get behind all that wagon that she dragging. Like baby girl, like six four, Amazon, thick, tall, thick. You heard me, Samoan chick, Woo! I get behind that, I ain't gonna last. That's not even made for me to really be in there like that. I'm in it anyways. I'm in it like Benny. Oh, but it's really not made for me to be in there. So you have to realize what you're properly suited for and stay in your lane. The problem is people get out their lane and when they end up crashing because they're in the fast lane, then they have complaints. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, men have a problem with that. Women also have a problem with that. But women aren't the ones on the internet red pill raging now, are they? Shout out to Big Simpin. Writes, peace to the saints. Did I miss the bus for the backpack briefcase? Thanks for the ism regardless. You did not. I just have been quite busy. I haven't had a chance to post it. It's about 100 days out. They're already being made. Um, so we will allow a few more pre-orders for that one. And what is the pre-order price? It's been a while. Yeesh. $350. Okay, I think it's $350. Um, but whatever it is, we're going to up it as soon as I uh, check. And we'll post it on the community tab. So 350 for now, and I'm going to up it and post it on the community tab because it should go up over time. I've just been busy. Anyways, carrying on. And you can send your 350 with your email address via PayPal or Cash App. We'll lock you in. Stop playing, Trey writes. If I were to draw a character from an anime and then put my drawing on a hat, is it likely I'll get sued for copyright? No, because it's likely that no one will buy your hat. Uh, what are some tips to avoid copyright infringement? Uh, don't worry about that. See, this is why a lot of people fail. They're scared. I always tell you, go for it like a fearless lunatic. In business, it turns out that in most circumstances, you never get big enough to be visible. For example, a lot of the things that I'm saying now, if I had the following of any of these other guys, like uh, say a Fresh and Fit or a, an Andrew Tate or a Kevin Samuels, if I had a following that big saying what I'm saying, well, I'd probably get canceled already. But at this level, I'm invisible at some, some stage to the powers that be. So what you need to do is put that product out, make your sales, build your audience, and then when you start reaching visibility to, to where you become legally liable uh, and you got some money that they can actually take from you, because right now if they sue you, they're going to get nothing. So if you start building up your wealth and your visibility, then you switch to your own anime character that you fabricated yourself. Carrying on. I got it right here, marquetteb at gmail.com. And thank you to the mods uh, who have supported the work over time. Truly appreciate that. Guys, I've been down for a long time. Donovan type guys. Isaiah, we just made a mod. Carrying on. In the bedroom. Most of the time, they're going to probably fall asleep within 15 minutes. But in terms of attention, if you remove any of these things, attention, if you remove these things, you lose the marriage, mm -hmm. right? Time. Time is a significant uh, value for men and matter of fact we call it and also Napoleon Hill calls it your most important asset mm -hmm. and many men will spend hours on hours on end pursuing relationships obtaining relationships keeping the relationship alive and then many times they will lose the relationship damn CGA I hate to do this to you but look number one can we live in reality everyone everyone can we live in reality please I could theoretically exercise more free time than anyone watching this live stream, probably. 
which is to say I get to do what I want when I want. Dealing with women is a great joy and pleasure for me. I don't know about you guys, but my whole life has been a great source of joy and pleasure. It's like a hobby. Now, first off, let's look at the average man. Does he have time? Absolutely. What do you guys do? Beat off. You're thinking about women that you don't have. That's a waste of time. Uh, and then, of course, you're suffering energy loss, time loss, uh, resources involved. You got to spend your money on your lotion, your Vaseline, your cleanup, your Kleenex, whatever you guys do. Then also you have the uh, video games. A lot of you guys play video games endlessly. I mean, we have entire industries based on video games now, which is strange. Grown men playing video games? That just sounds bad. Grown man, but you're playing. And then these are games. I'm done, I'm done. They don't even sound right. Long story short, how many grown men are playing video games Uh, watching pornography, and engaging in other idle activities that are completely irrelevant. The suggestion that most men have time that is highly valuable is a complete lie. Yes, again, and it's almost enraging me because it's such an obvious lie. The average man is concerned with triviality. Sports, not playing the sports, watching the sports. Video games, engaging in alternate realities. Pornhub. They got plenty of time. So let's stop acting like dedicating time to women is a big L. It's not. Furthermore, women, i.e. relationships, love, romance, that's a part of the joy of life. What kind of sick Grinch mentality MF you got to be to not want to deal with women, which is our natural pair? What are we talking about here? I mean, it's ludicrous. If someone thinks it's not ludicrous, please let me know. Shout out to Jabari. And Rex said, like, share, subscribe. And people might be like, oh, man, he didn't have CGA in the studio. He ain't turned up on CGA like this. Correct. It wasn't a debate. It was a time for him to speak his mind. I was interviewing him, so I'm there to listen. Now, it's all love. He's a good friend of mine. Like, he just messaged me before this. and He knows I'm, I'm going to go off. Whatever it is, I'm going off. Um, and if he want to come on for a debate, we'll invite him for a debate. Because just like the gentleman mentioned earlier, he might have been ambushed on this platform, but I would never invite him on as an interview, as a celebrity guest, and then try to debate him. That's not quite right. Carrying on. Oh, yeah, and do hit the subscribe if you haven't. This is the best game there is. On PayPal, if they... we have, oh, Brian just bought the briefcase. Okay, he, didn't, he bossed up? Yeah. Okay. We caught up? Caught up. Stop giving the time. Now, the money part of it, everybody knows it's all transactional. You know, you've had girlfriends, you've tried to pursue women, you're going to give up money. Now, it's not a bad thing that the relationships are transactional. So when I say... Let me address that piece about the transactional nature. He's talking about finances, right? So number one, a lot of guys don't even really have significant finances to contribute. (laughs) Ah, how about that part? Uh, That's number one. Number two... Uh, for the guys who do engage in the transactional nature of relationships, that's something that they submit to. That is not an actual requirement of male-female engagement. That is something that they've selected to submit to. And generally speaking, this happens not as much due to the rotten nature of the female, and a great many are rotten, but rather this occurs as a result of the male lacking value in himself. You have imbeciles, the likes of which you observe in DJ Fatademics. Livingston! And what you'll see in Livingston is that being that he's unattractive, he is devoid of personality and self-esteem, has no confidence, has no style, all he has is money. And so him, like most other guys who don't have any true value in themselves, they offer the one value that they know is real, which is the value of money. And that's when you get the situation of a guy buying a girl a drink at a bar or a guy taking a girl on four or five dates and he pays for all the dates. Well, his only value is the money and she shows up to collect. You know, if people are handing out free money to you, would you not collect? So the woman could be a gold digger, but a gold digger can't dig on a guy who's not shelling it out willingly. You know, it's not robbery. It's the male submitting submitting to his own weakness and submitting to the robbery of this, or the the gold digging nature of the female. You see, if on the other hand, you saw true value in yourself, and like myself, I, I couldn't even tell you last time I bought a chick a drink at a bar or a club, that's because it, last time it happened was a, uh, never worry first, never worry first, never done that in my whole life, because number one, I don't drink, 
So what do I look like buying a chick a, a drink? And then number two, I don't b- believe in alcoholism. So I'm not going to provide her a poison I wouldn't ingest myself. Uh, unless it's in the context of our podcast where these chicks trying to get smashed and they drinking at the house, you dig? Shout out to Joe K. He writes, thanks for the ism. Peace of the Saints. That was truly a pleasure. Peace of the Saints. Uh, would you make that thermostat colder for me? Appreciate it. So when he's talking about this uh, transactional nature, you're really going to only hear this kind of talk from guys who are tricks, guys who are low on the dating market, or guys who have low self-esteem. You're never going to hear this from winners. And we know this because the winners are the peas. You heard me, the ones that's milking them chicks. We didn't flip the whole dynamic. We ain't paying them, they paying the pea, you dig? Or you, you got a guy who's a super player, you dig? He living like a gigolo out here. You heard me, he living AOB all on a bitch. Or you got guys who are out here. I know a lot of uh, broke guys in the hood that in, survived on chicks for years, man. Got four, five baby mamas. They ain't paid a penny in child support, but living A-OK. So this story clearly doesn't add up. Because if this story add, added up, a lot of African-American males would be down bad. Because financially speaking, the African-American male is uh, kind of in the most downtrodden position financially. But we see that they're doing just fine in terms of procreating now, aren't they? Relationships are transactional. It's not a complaint. Many mm-hmm. people think it's, it's a complaint. But it's just the reality. And we have to accept that reality. Gotcha. Have you, so you've never, uh, you've never seen coaches' content ever? Really? I'm, I'm, a, I'm aware of all almost everybody in the space kind of where where coach is at um a lot of people i may have hear ideas from other people but i don't think i've actually sat down and watched anything from like on live i may have seen like damn just say like, no yes. god damn that's the most feminine response you've never seen his content well um the square root of 84 is six uh, carry the three and i went to the planet jupiter just say no god certain people but Mm -hmm. i've never actually sat down and said okay let me sit down is he gonna repeat i've never actually sat down who listens to this that guy apollo writes i work overnight so i can't watch your streams i've been watching your content for two weeks and you have given me more information than anybody in most of my life thank you for the knowledge and your time i appreciate that and shout out to the real ones you dig yeah i I really appreciate that. that that's a high compliment hear him from my memory i may i may it may have occurred in the past but from my memory i can't like quote ideology bro hurry up he holds got currently but when you hear someone say all right protect your meat and you're hearing him break that down what's the first thing that comes to mind to you it sounds good you Mm -hmm. know like i think first off there's some of us who have testosterone and there's some of us who don't okay um, the ones who don't have testosterone, they get along with women famously. Oh, they get along with women. Why? Because they damn near are a woman. That's why they get along with them. Me, I'm listening to a woman half the time. I didn't forgot. Oh, damn, you still talking, shorty? Whoa, that's amazing. I didn't fell asleep, had four dreams. You still talking? Nah, it's like when you're that feminine that you give this verbose, long-winded answer to a simple yes or no question, you're feminine, bruh. And for that reason, you're going to get along with women beautifully because you are one. But you're also going to get ran over by a woman. Oh, my God. This, of course, he married to a woman legally. Of course. Of course. Hey, honey, are you going to be on all fours tonight or am I going to be on all fours? You know, we believe in equality. So do you want to you want to beat me down tonight, honey? It's your turn, I think. Goodness. Everyone should protect their money. Mm-hmm. Everyone should protect their time. Right, like I think that sounds good. It's just how is that fleshed out? That's what I'm just I'm curious about, right? Because okay. I think sometimes, um, I, I what I love about what you do so much, Adam, and I have to shout out what, what you're doing, is that you bring in. Is he nervous or does he always talk like this? As I said, I, I've not seen his stuff, but is he nervous right now? Like, why is he talking so damn slowly? You see, some people talk slowly because their mind moves slowly. I understand that. When you're dealing with intelligent people, you talk this damn slowly. They're like, ah, come on, man. Let's speed this up. I ain't gonna live, I ain't gonna live a thousand years. This man talks slowly while managing to say nothing. I can understand if he was just dropping some deep stuff on me and he had to take a pause to let it sink in. If he just explained to me the meaning of life and he just like, pause. Yeah, let that sink in. It's like, bruh, hurry the hell up. Man, him and Kanye, I just can't have a conversation with. They talk too damn slow, but they ain't saying shit. Shout out to Ricardo. Baller alert. I mean, this dude didn't piss me off. I'm sorry, I didn't forgot. He didn't, I'm listening to this dude. It's so slow. We ain't even going to make it through. Listen to this guy. We ain't going to make it through. Ricardo consistently comes with baller alert. 
Ricardo. Yeah, shout out to Ricardo. He's shout out to the ballers. This slow talking. In people from different sides. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm really interested in you know. This dude is so yeah. vaginal. I'm sorry. If the can we all <laughs> makes you a better man. Can we all officially agree Marquette's never going to be invited to the roommates? Can we all officially agree the Saint in the Center is officially banned from the roommates? Because this, nah, hell nah. Uh-uh. <laughs> makes you a better father. You may not feel this way, but makes you a better husband. If it makes you better, that's mm -hmm. a win. I don't care who it comes from. And so, and so I love the ability of unique ideas. I also want to point out something. You'll notice he says, quote, I love, he said this two times, and I've been fast forwarding, so maybe he said it more than that. This is a clear indication that he lacks vocabulary. I hate to see abuses of the English language like this because words lose meaning. People use the term love. Love is supposed to be a powerful thing. Love is supposed to be powerful, yet he's already fallen in love two times. When you lack vocabulary, you don't have the proper usage of diction, which is word selection, to use the word that appropriately describes the given phenomena. He's abusing language, and more importantly, he's talking too much. So we know that anyone around him who has intelligence, or any woman around him, will never take what he says with weight, because his words are too plentiful. We value that which is scarce. In other words, tell him to shut them. Go ahead. And I'm not going to call him a, a SIMP yet. I haven't observed that. What I just, all that I have observed is that it appears he was raised by a liberal white woman. Um, and whether that was directly, I don't know if he's adopted. Maybe he wanted Angelina Jolie kids. She adopt, adopted some Africans, right? Um, maybe he wanted them. Or he was raised by a liberal white woman in the context of a university system and a public schooling system, which is where their ideology controls. And you have a lot of duplicates. I think Ivan von Sertema called them duplicates, which is they're a duplicate of the liberal white woman's thinking, but they might look like you and I. They might look like an Indian man, might look like a Latino man, might look like a black man, might even look like a white man, but they're really a liberal white woman. By far the sharpest individual I have ever seen on YouTube. I hope people Appreciate can identify that. the true quality which he brings to the world. It is of the highest order, church. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And, you know, the, the sadness is that really only intelligent people can identify intelligence. It is a condition of being unintelligent that you don't understand the world. You don't fully comprehend things. And, you know, unintelligent people are easily fooled. And there are a lot of charlatans on the Internet. So I, I really do appreciate that carrying on ideas being able to be discussed today and I just hope the best idea always wins. I love this is so stupid and, and, and cliche. I hope the best idea wins. The best idea almost never wins. That's why we have something called marketing imbecile and furthermore this guy's a disgrace to Nigerians because the Nigerians I know are highly intelligent. Shout out to Dr. Ohabunwa which is a good friend of mine and a record setter in terms of academic achievement at the Johns Hopkins University. Um, this guy's an imbecile, especially by Nigerian standards, because if he is indeed Nigerian, Nigerians come to America, you heard me take a degree in the sciences and go, yay, yay. This dude is a goofball. He seemed like the type that majored in like sociology. And he is a one slow talking, pointless guy. And he's just repeating things others have said. He has not sustained an original thought, which lets me know. And this is, you wonder, why has Marquette been making more YouTube content? I've been making it purely because I truly believe and have a thousand percent certain certainty I'm a hundred percent superior to everyone on YouTube and I hate to see that I'm not outperforming them I've outperformed them in the real measures in life like money accomplishment reputation women all those things I've already beat them in that I want to beat them in the subs I want to beat them in dominance I want to beat them in marketing because I look at them and I think you guys are spreading corruption among the youth and I'm truly competitive I'm a competitive person and that's why because my disgust has overwhelmed me that's why I'm doing it Tell him I hear this right now. Tuition, Google keeps blocking my super chats and I'm not sure why. It might, depend, it might be related to certain words you're using within the super chat. That could be it. Um, and if that's the case, feel free to come in via Cash App and PayPal. We'll, we'll definitely make sure we read it. Shout out to 10K. 
comes in with the tuition appreciated. Shout out to the Saints in Canada. Oh, it felt nice. Did it twice. Yeah. Okay. And Puck Day has said, I just put half the Saints in Vegas cars up top in ballet, and he's still finishing wow. the sentence. That's real. That's real right there. Hey. <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you, man. Hafiz talked like one of them senior citizens that see now and they start talking, forget what they was talking about, but they just keep going, trying to figure out as they talking. Oh my goodness. Granddaddy Hafiz. Now, yeah. See, I'm not here to challenge anyone to a physical fight or challenge their yeah. masculinity. However, we know how to survive in those environments. Yeah. And that means you can't be overly masculine. You have to present a side that's going to address the consumer to sell dishwater or dish uh, shampoo and that type of thing. Got so. It. So what, what, what's happening is men had to create their own lanes, essentially mm -hmm. jump on YouTube and other platforms to get the mic to be able to say what they want to say without being canceled. So this is the beautiful time we live in. Be, be like coach over here and just I'm looking. If we're in the eighth <laughs> inning, I'm trying to get out before the game's over kind of a thing. If you would break that down. Why would you ask a woman to break down anything? I don't ask her to break anything. I might ask her to bust something. Bust it open. Bust it wide open. And we know she's good at that. She got her OnlyFans. You heard me? Uh, but I wouldn't ask a bimbo to break down a damn thing. Might ask her to bounce like a bed spring. Yeah, so that that's actually interesting that a lot, I don't have very many friends. By the way, that's a clear indicator that someone's brain moves slowly. If you ever see a politician ask the question and their immediate response is, quote, that's very interesting or that's a good question. That means my brain is loading. It's moving slowly. Give me some time to think about what you said while I say something that's meaningless. That's what that means. Let's listen to this bimbo. Friends, well, obviously, because of my industry now, but even prior to that, because the friends that I did have that were in marriages, I've always been happy in marriage. I married literally to my best friend. We got married very young. Um, I love him. You know you're a real feminine dude when your wife says, I'm married to my best friend. Oh, you guys paint your toenails together. That's cute. Oh, you guys, hey, I'll paint your toenails. You paint my toenails. Oh, that's so nice. Do you want me to pluck your chest hairs? Oh, too far? Okay. You know, I'm not your best friend. You heard me? We could be married for 50 years. I'm not your best friend. I want you to shut up half the time and it's fine. That's just the balance between male and female. I'm sure every now and then you want me to stop like uh, taking you to boxing matches because you really don't want to be there. I get that. You know, we need to respect the differences and stop trying to mold into the same thing. We will, we will be one, but we'll, we will be one together. We're not going to melt into the same person. When a female says you're her best friend, that's because she identifies with you too much because you act like a broad. And she's mentally ill, which is why she would even deal with you. She sought a half man. You're not even a whole man, little buddy. He's my best friend because he lets me run my program and I run his program. But if she with the big homie, she ain't running nothing but her mouth. You dig? Because check this out. When you want to show your vagina and all other private parts that should be for your husband to the whole world and you do that for a cheap price, you are a piece of trash. And that's not only because I'm a dominant man that wants what I want only for me. That's because you will not have my kids at school and have the Saint in the Center kids saying, your mom's a slore. Nah, you ain't gonna have the Saint in the Center kids making fun of them. Um, nah, uh-uh. How embarrassing is that when the kids at the lunch table on their phone on Pornhub.com and your mom is on there. Hey, look, that's his mom. Nah, that's not, nah, we ain't gonna, we gonna have, have the kids suffering like that. No, sir. Talk to me. Paris said tuition. Your mom's a, fa a famous slore. I remember when I was a kid, if there was rumor that your mom was a slore, you was getting roasted and embarrassed. When there was rumor, now we got the evidence. Dang, your mama throat is deep. No wonder her neck's so long. Your mama nickname is giraffe. Whoa, your mama crazy. Is she coming to parent teacher night? Come on, man. That's outrageous. Paris, thank you for the tuition. Go ahead. Have Johnson $50. Baller alert. He writes, I know you're a serious man, but you have me crying, laughing, talking about Hafiz. Much respect. <laughs> you know what? And I try my best. I try my best because I don't even really want to disrespect Hafiz because I never met him and it's no disrespect. But I just feel how I feel. You heard me. It is what it is. Carrying on. We have Mitchell came in on Man and Woman Brand and got three of the bees. Oh, shout out. Shout out. Absolutely. I actually got that one myself. I saw someone recently had also cop. Oh, you know what? Dylan copped the bucket hat, the man and woman bucket hat, which is cold. Jeff sent a cash app. He said, chapter 28, pick a side, black box is pure genius. Yeah, appreciate that. 
We have Mitchell got another beanie, so he got four beanies. Okay, he's getting ready for the winter. He's getting ready. I need to get ready for the winter because where I fly to might be cold. And um, shout out to the saint. He said uh, that chapter in my book called The Black Box, which you can get on Amazon or you can get a low cost ebook at marquetism.com. It says, pick a side. And that really comes from deep wisdom that has been true for all of human history. You can even um, hear this from Niccolo Machiavelli, the writer of The Prince, which is the book that basically Robert Greene has bootlegged for all of his books, 48 Laws of Powers and whatever other garbage he's produced. And the idea of pick a side is that, you know, standing in the middle ain't going to get you nowhere. I am this, you know, stand on your side and fight hard on that side, but trying to ride the fence, you're always going to lose. And uh, if you really want to understand how that breaks down, read that chapter in my book entitled Pick a Side. Okay, JT said, I had to pay tuition. I feel guilty watching this for free. Shout out to the men with morals. And on Cash App, Julia said, tuition, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Carry on. Back to this broad. Him, I enjoyed my time with him. We have fun together. I think what I would deal with is a lot of complaining. Like it was every conversation in the break room at work is everybody just hates their husbands. And it was like, these are the, these are the women complaining women. to you. And this is when you were a nurse. Yeah. Oh yeah. All okay. the time. And I had a hard time connecting with people because it's like, well, here, I'm going to be this girl. Like, Oh, well, I love my, we're going to go out and have yeah. drinks. You guys want to go that they, they're just the guys. I always noticed the husbands were always out with their friends and you know, the wives were always doing their own thing. It was very divided household. And, um, I we have a whole porn actress, judging other people's marriages saying they had a divided household is this like a, a, a <laughs> this is like a pedophile uh raging against people engaging in sexual impropriety this is outrageous what are, why are we even listening to this bra she about to get fast forwarded so quick right now and just side note you notice she said the other marriages the guys would go out with their buddies and the women would go do their thing with their girls that's fine to have girl time and guy time i want to be clear Girl time will not be a girl's trip, you heard me? Girl time will not be you flying to Miami or Saint City with your homegirls. No, that's not girl's time. Uh, girl's time, and, and pay attention, ladies, saints, women who want to have morals and want to learn from a man, this is what girl's time is. I'm going to play board games at the house with my homegirls or with my family, the women in my family, my mother, my aunt, my sisters. Yeah, that's women's time. You might be like, damn, Mark, why that's boring. No, that's called family life. Yeah, you grew up dysfunctionally. If you think playing board games with your family or your girlfriends is boring, you don't have any decency. Girl time is when the ladies get together and watch they show. Yeah, what, Grey's Anatomy, go ahead, shorty. I ain't going to watch it with you. I ain't watching Grey's Anatomy with you. Yeah, yeah, whatever you watch, watch that with your girls. That's girl's time. Yeah, start sewing. Yeah, let, have a book club. That's girl's time. What girl's time is not is you uh, dressing up like a, a, a video hoe and going to the club and listening to the latest Lil Baby song and then twerking and then recording it for TikTok. That's, what, that's, what, that's what's not gonna happen. And guys' time is not me going to the bar because I don't drink. And I don't wanna be around these guys when they're not, in a sense, inside their mind, you heard me? Because some of them get outside of their mind and you know, things are liable to pop off. I don't wanna be in that environment. You know, guys' time is me getting together, building products, you know, running community activities. That's what we fail to understand. So it's good for us to have a separation. One, because you need time apart to miss your spouse. And then number two, male and female are different. You spend too much time together. That's because one of y'all ain't right. Carrying on. Hey, Balancing Coast said, I appreciate your realness and real masculine energy. Thanks for being you. Would still love to do a live with you. I do wish men continue to learn from you. Yeah, we should. I think I'd... Uh, if this is who I think it is, I think I'd replied and said, what should the topic be? So uh, if you shoot me a DM on IG, we can set something up. It can be a real interesting conversation. So shoot me a DM. Hey, Marquette, I want to do this topic, and then we'll schedule it, and we'll make it happen. Thank hey. you for the compliment. Jaden said a cash app. He said peace to the saints. What should I do to become an FBI post-grad? He's talking about an F Federal Bureau of Investigation. That says FBI. Okay. So that is a serious process and I encourage you to try to you know break into any of the clandestine services generally they like people who are 24 years or younger when they're applying you should have a language uh, in you know Pashto uh, or Urdu Arabic Farsi these are called critical needs languages those are the ones that they prefer um, if you have a degree in engineering uh, one of the hard sciences uh, sometimes business 
uh, those are good degrees. Uh, degrees, uh, advanced degrees uh, can be helpful uh, if they're in the right areas. If you have those basics, then you'll be a good candidate and you should absolutely apply. Uh, I highly recommend it. Carry on. All right. And thank you for the question. I've noticed this too, even my sons, they're older now, but they've told me like at other people's house, it's just crazy. Like I never see the parents sitting on the couch together like you guys do. Or Now, let me ask you this. Notice she's not about to talk about this. I hope, let's see if this interviewer has any decency and if he's going to be real with this chick. I'm not saying be rude. I'm not saying kick her off the show. I'm not saying yell or curse at her. I'm, let, I'm saying, is he going to be real and say, have your sons ever been made fun of because you're an internet whore? I just want him to ask that. Have your sons ever suffered because of your lack of morality? Okay, we have James said $50. Baller alert. He said, the advice you gave me about being exceptional and working things into existence has pushed my life to the next mm. level. Appreciate the game. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. You know, those who use the wisdom always prosper. There's some, they're hearers of knowledge, but they're not doers. Those who are doers will see good things. All that is good for you and bad for you, you will experience in this life. Your hell or heaven will be in this life based on your deeds, I promise you. If you're experiencing good things, heaven, being able to travel wherever you want, whenever you want, have conversations with good people. That's because of good deeds you have invested. If you're suffering in this life, as an adult male, it is a result of your lack of good deeds and what's worse, your vices. I promise you. Carrying on. Or like hugging or kissing or, you know, walking in the kitchen, my husband slapped my ass. Like it's just. Mm -hmm. See, this is how you know you're dealing with a harlot. She's describing what her son said to her, yet she is describing sexual behavior. My husband slapping my butt. Well, truth be told, that's not a behavior I want to demonstrate in front of my child. I am not a believer in public display of affection, and I am further not a believer in displaying unnecessary sexuality in front of my child. Affection is something different, but when you deal with someone who is perverse, they don't understand affection apart from sexuality, which are not the same. But in a traumatized mind, and she probably got messed with as a kid, undoubtedly, in a traumatized mind, sexuality and sex and affection are the same thing. Affection is when I stand next to my woman while she's doing dishes and keep her company and have conversation with her. That's affection. I'm giving of my time and my company and something that doesn't, isn't my realm. It's a contribution and she's happy that I'm there. It's affection. It's love. There are ways to give affection that are not sexual. She don't even comprehend that. Shout out to Rex. He writes, sign up to Patreon. Prices gems there. Too real for YouTube, indeed, in a real way. Don't believe me? Ask the saints and the believers. Yes, sir. This chick look evil right now. I'm about to just enlarge her face. If this is not the face of evil, and the funny thing too is I can see that she got a nose job and she still look evil. That's wild. She has a lot of work done. You can tell above the eyes is too sucked in. What do you call that when they suck all that above the eyes? A bluff. A bluff. She, she had her upper bluff done. And she didn't got she didn't got Botox too hard because there's some weird indentations on her cheek, and she's trying to smile, but her face looked like it's just a little too stretched. Yeah, her work. She needs to quit doing all that work. Vanity is killing this female. Those things like they don't see any affection, and so I've never connected with a lot of other people because of that. So to answer, you never connected with other people because you can't connect. You have no heart. You're a harlot. You share your draws with everyone perspective that's all that i offer i tell men to not get married especially when you don't have wow. leverage however i also tell you do not listen to people who simplify this this is a very complicated thing oh, that most people fail at miserably got it and this is what i want let, people let me uh, let me tee up a piece because you used a few things there yeah. about not getting married yeah, yeah, yeah. you said sometimes if you, you don't turn have in, leverage okay if you don't yeah. have leverage we'll talk about that yeah and you, you talk about turning into roommates. Well, this guy is the roommate, the host of the right. roommate channel. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, when you're hearing this, you've been married one year. And by the <sighs> way, this guy's a sharp, informed, very intentional guy. He's not, I, you, Greg, about three years ago about marriage? I didn't react to it. I didn't do a reaction video. Okay. But yeah, I made a comment about okay, it. Okay, you made yeah. a comment about yeah. it. Okay, so, um, so to me, I'm really excited about it, but it's also key to talk about experience. Mm -hmm. Experience shapes your view, right? Yeah. So a girl who's been abused by a lot of different men, 
she's going to have a very cynical leaning view towards men. Let me summarize because he's about to take 30 minutes to say what he's going to say. He's about to express the idea, you got divorced, your marriage sucked, now you're mad about marriages. Fair, correct, makes sense. Um, you got screwed in the marriage courts, now you mad. Who mad? You mad. That makes sense. Got it. Thank you for taking 30 damn minutes to say that. Lord, I'm going to just go ahead and forward. Shout out to Adam. He writes, aiming for my first 100-hour work week this week, so can't stand the live dropping tuition. Peace to the saints. <laughs> that's a wild boy right there, man. Hey, go up. People can we help get there, and that's what, to me, matters the most. Gotcha. Preach. I love that. Now, when, when you hear this something like devil, this, obviously... Did this devil say preach? How are you the actual devil saying preach? Ironic. He's sort of saying, all right, I hear you. You'd probably be a ridiculous amount of coach, but don't I don't do not get married without leverage. That is a position, right? Mm -hmm. That you can change. Thus, if you read my book, it says once you get to that position, you can then make the decision. You'll probably come out better yeah. than going in it without it. However, this is what I will always say. Mm -hmm. When men do find that that solution does not work out, they are left alone. There's nobody to help them. So people encourage people, hey, why not? Give it a try. But when you go bankrupt, when you lose your kids, when your kids are taken from you, mm -hmm. when the courts. Okay, so what he's speaking from is a position of weakness and a position of a lack of planning, right? And one thing I always remind you men of is the existence of a man versus a child and a woman is radically different. We all know this. When the boat is sinking, they say, save the women and children. Apparently, if you're a man, you got to know how to swim. We get that. This is clear. Why you have males who still complain about the fact that there's no one to save us is strange. You're supposed to be Superman. You don't get saved by Superman. Lois Lane gets saved by Superman. Notice, men being the savior is embedded in our language. Example, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, and it goes on and on. The man is the savior. So why is the gentleman complaining about, well, if you make mistakes, there's no one to save you. Yeah, duh. So the key is to use the best of wisdom from your elders, and he is such a person. The best of wisdom from those who are experienced, and he is such a person. And that's why I think he's on telling the story, because he has the experience, the know-how. To use the best of wisdom of those who have gone before you, who have suffered, and who have experience and good strategy so that you can navigate better. But to expect that you're going to be saved for anything is foolish. And I don't care if we're talking about a failed marriage, or struggling with your kids, or how about this? You're unemployed. You're going broke. You can't provide for yourself financially. Forget marriage. Just sustaining yourself. Yeah, no one's going to save you. Yeah. Or just being homeless. I will tell you one of my most vivid, disturbing realizations. Piss me off. I had just come from Puerto Rico. I got hit by a hurricane. It took a long time to escape the island. I was essentially homeless. One, because I refused to get a job. I was like, nope, I'm going to continue with my corporation. I will not get a job. I will not beg for money from anyone and I will not go live in my mother's basement because unlike the middle class black and white kids and Asian kids, all those other middle class people, my mom ain't got a basement for me to live in. So I was actually homeless. While I was homeless, I looked up homeless shelters. One thing that I found to be quite egregious, comical, but it is what it is, there are no homeless shelters for men. There were a ton of homeless shelters if you're a minor, that is a child. Okay, fair enough. And if you're a woman, tons of homeless shelters because apparently they don't want women out on the streets. But if you're a man, there's just one homeless shelter here and there. And if for some reason you actually get them on the phone or get them to respond to an email, it's always full and there's a wait, like a nine month wait. By the time you're done waiting, you won't be homeless or you'll be dead. And I realized, like, wow, you got to go ahead and get it on in this world. And that is why I have always been of the mind that I would rather rob, steal, and kill before I turn into a victim. Yeah, this is the real world. 
And those who deny it are lying to themselves and you will suffer for your lies. You're going to kill or be killed. You're going to eat or be eaten. You can walk down that dark alley and be terrified or you could be in that dark alley and be what the other people are terrified of. Yeah, get it on in this world. Which is to say, if you're a man, you got to choose your side. Victim or victimizer? Master or slave? Pimp or hoe? What's it going to be? It is what it is. Now, you might say, Marquette, that's a cold world. Well, in some senses, yeah, it is a cold world. And in another sense, it's a beautiful world. When you live among saintly people, people who are honest, have integrity and are civilized. And when you follow this ism, you follow this ism religiously, which is something I tell you. Always work in the three major areas of health, wealth and relationships. When you have good relationships, no one will let you suffer for long. You have good relationships. If you don't have something to eat, someone who loves you will provide you something to eat. Someone who respects you will provide you something to eat. If you don't have a dollar, someone who loves you will put a dollar in your pocket. Someone who respects you will put a dollar in your pocket. That's when you have strong relationships. When you have been intelligent in the area of wealth, you will have what's called money for a rainy day, which is to say if you save your money, your money will save you. If you have been focused on your health, you can endure. If you have good physical health and mental health, you can endure and you will not grow weak complaining. Now, and furthermore, when you're a masculine man and you've selected a spouse well, she knows you're a man of your word. If a woman, if I say I had kids with a woman, I tell her, I will not suffer you taking my children. When I tell her that, she knows it's real. And she should be terrified to take my kids away because when I say something, I deliver. When you look at situations like the DC sniper, are you guys aware that the DC sniper is a result of a man who told a woman, you will not take my kids? She used the government, that is the state, as an instrument to take his kids. And he said, I won't have it. And he killed random people so that he could eventually kill her without it being figured out that he was the culprit. He wanted to make it look like a random act, which is to say, number one, he was a man of his word. His error was he chose the wrong woman. But more important than that, she should be terrified when a man of his word says, you will not take my kids. Now, here's the thing. If you were a jokester and you were not wise, living by good morals and values and you selected the wrong woman, well, she's going to behave according to her nature, not according to the nature of a saintly woman. And now you're going to suffer her behaving like a harlot because she is a harlot. Huh? So I say that to say this. Number one, as a man, no one will save you. You got to save yourself. Number two, you will suffer or you will prosper based on the woman you select. And number three, if you're a man of your word, you heard me, people ain't going to play with you. They ain't going to play with you. And if they do, you can fix things. And that's the importance of organization. You see, we have the assassin. And we're together because there's strength in unity and there's strength in numbers. It is a protection for me. It is a protection for you. Just as in every tribe and group and nation has an army and has a police force. The only problem is that you're in America. The police are not doing their job. And in some cases, the government itself is stopping them from doing their job. Sometimes the police are your enemy, not your protector. The government is fleecing you for money through taxation without representation, spending your money on foreign nationals. So we're in a situation where we must erect our own nation and protect ourselves. You see, I promise you, you know, if I were a woman and I was trying to fleece one of the saints for some money that I didn't deserve, I'd be terrified because I know that they're serious men and they're going to do whatever it takes, takes to seek justice that they define as justice. You heard me? Carrying on. Okay, on Cash App, we have Dad said, what are some traits to strengthen manhood of this generation? Peace to the saints. He's talking about for himself or the whole damn generation. Well, study this ism. That's number one. Study the ism and live the ism. You know, that, that's about all there is to it. I got over 100 free videos. Well over a shit. I got probably three, 400 free videos. And if you want some high-level games so you can operate at the highest levels, patreon.com slash the saint in the center. 
And what's more than that is, you know, we got basic training coming up. We'll be announcing it. It's going to be in February, in late February. You know, come out to that. Be around real men. Because what I can promise you is that you will not be around high performers and not become one of them. You will not be around great men and not soak up something. For example, last time we had a conference, um, unexpectedly probably, I said, hey, you know, we're going to have a workout. If you guys want to join, feel free to join. It's optional. Some guys join. And, you know, for the most part, you know, the Saints, they, they about their business. There's some of the young boys, the, the guys in their early 20s, they start gassing out during the run. Every single one of those guys followed up with me like, hey, you know, I, I noticed I was falling behind, getting tired and having to take a break. They changed their standards. They say, hey, now I know next time I show up, I got to be suited and booted and ready to do it. See, your standards raise when you're around great men. They have to. Baller alert, Mitchell he said, prospering. He said your four-part analysis of the prints is immaculate. I appreciate that. Yeah, and for the folks who haven't seen that, there's a four-part, which is four separate videos in which I anal uh, analyze a literary masterpiece entitled The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli. And you can see that at patreon.com slash the Saint the Center. And then he came right back and said peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And on Super Chat, we have Little Cash Kid said... Peace to the Saints, tuition for this high-level-ism, fresh from mm. the source. Pure game unlike any other, the one and only, the big homie, Sassin Takeover. In a real way, it's Sassin or nothing, you dig? And y'all, and he right, you're getting it pure from the source because most everything else you hear on the internet, they just repeating what I said, even though they ain't lived it, huh? Yeah. I find this stuff to be comical. You know, I would love to sit down with one of the passport bros and I'm going to just ask them like, hey, what's the capital of Gambia? Oh, you don't know? Okay. What's the capital of Namibia? Here, here's an empty map. Drawing, where is Namibia on the map? Oh, you don't know? You're the passport bros. How you don't know where these, these countries are? Because you ain't been nowhere. You're not the passport bros. You're just a thirsty dude who can't control his penis, and you're broke, so you have to go to poor countries with retrograde economies to pay for $10 vagina. You're not a passport bro. You broke. I'm sorry. Carrying on. I heard somebody, I saw somebody in the comments said, uh, so-and-so won't mess with you because you ain't got receipts. Receipts? I'm on my third passport. What receipts you got? Who you, who are you? You didn't go by your real name out here. Nick, you, uh, receipts? Type my name in Google. Those are receipts. Give me a break, internet nerds. Kind of punish you for making this decision or punish you, punishes you for being a slightly better, higher earner. And nobody's there with information. Nobody's there with context. No one's mm -hmm. there to help them. And I believe, not feel, I know, understand, believe, and I have evidence to show that men are left alone when they don't succeed in this endeavor. And that's true. And that's why if you took 100 people who follow CGA and you took 100 people who follow the saint in the center and you locked them in a room and said fight to the death, we'd kill every last one of them because they weak. And I love CGA. You heard me? You know, I, I view them as a, a OG. And I view him as a good dude. But the ones who follow in this ism is savages. You dig? And the ones who follow in anything other than the ism is weak. Period. That is the void that I feel. Because I can tell you. And he right. He rightly understands the consumer. Like people, they hear what I have to say. And they're like, dang, that's too strong. It's like when you go to the bar, right? You're like, um, hey, um, the people who follow everything else, they're like, hey, make me a cocktail. Um, make me a cocktail and put a little flower in it and put one of those umbrellas in it. And they drink in these like little soft drinks. And the people who messing with the saint in the center then showed up to the bar and said, hey, man, you got some hundred proof. You got, um, look, here's life and here's death. Make me a drink that'll get me right here. It's too strong. They can't handle it. Yeah. And I don't even like to use the metaphor of alcohol because I don't believe in alcoholism. But the fact is that the reason the Internet can deal with what these other guys say is because it lets you be soft. So who you are today, that soft, weak, scared, unconfident version of yourself that's passing up opportunities and living life as though you have an endless number of tomorrows, that person you are today, they tell you that's OK. They let you be comfortable as you are. And I tell you that, no, you are actually great. And every day that you live the way you're living today, you're wasting the greatness within you. I'm telling you to wake up every day and get hyped up on aggression and go out and take everything you ever wanted. 
I'm telling you that just one level below Jeffrey Dahmer, I want you to be that savage. I'm telling you if you see Shorty and you want to talk to her, go talk to her. Yeah, I'm telling you if you want to apply for a job and you ain't qualified, apply anyways. I'm telling you I'd rather you die trying to bench press some weight that's too damn heavy than to not even try it. These boys are weak out here. How is it everybody's an alpha male, but in reality, I'm the only one. That's actually true to the term alpha male. I'm at the apex, the only one up there. Everybody else is weak and soft, and I really mean it. I don't care who you point to. Eugene, hey, men are alone in this situation. I'm sorry, go ahead. Eugene said dropping respect for the insights. Appreciate that, Eugene. Men are homeless. Men are thinking about eating guns. Men are thinking about they have no way out. Men are losing. Damn, them. I think I heard um, Coach Pink Pill give the exact same speech. It was called We're Tired. I swear. I swear. Look this up. It's, uh, I got a video called, I don't even remember. It's, I think it's called Coach Pink Pill. And Coach Pink Pill gives the same men are tired. We have to do this. We have to do It's like, God damn, bro. <laughs> damn. Like, <laughs> women want to be men, men don't want to be women. No wonder we got so many issues in the society. Hey, we have Jazzy J said, I just found you. I had to ask who the target audience is. I think that's a good question for people on here that are new to the channel. Good question. The content centers around prospering in the areas of wealth and relationships. So money and women. I help you get to money and women most efficiently. We also have a greater movement that is global. It's called the Saint in the Center Nation, which is to say I have a whole integrated philosophy way of being that helps you live at the highest level, live in a civilized way. It teaches you to always have uh, goals in areas of health, wealth, and relationships. We have a three sentence Bible. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. Number three, be good to good people and do it in that order, meaning be yourself, and then be good to yourself before you're good to anyone else, which is not to say other people aren't important, but it's to say the better you are to yourself, you're well nourished, well taken care of, you have abundance, you can give to other people. And we put you within a real network of people around the world so that you can live in the best way. Thank you for that question. Carrying on. And subscribe. Oh yeah, and absolutely subscribe if you haven't. I mean, who else is talking it like I talk it? Big time, and we're losing a fraction of men through due to manipulation, due to people trying to, you know, they may be hurt, a woman might be hurt in a marriage, mm -hmm. or she might. Okay, we going, he said 3345, the same had recommended? Whatever time you wrote down. Okay, so I'm gonna go to that time. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, did you get a prenup when you got married? No, and I, and I explained, you did it. I explained to you guys yeah. why. So I think, and I talked about this, I, I love the prenup conversation. I think it's important. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, there's, th there's three reasons why I didn't get a prenup, but the first reason is I actually believe prenups are good and bad. They're good because they protect you. They're bad because they don't. By the way, I love the femininity. Every time he talks, it's never a yes or no. It's never a brief answer. It's never a sharp answer. It's always long-winded. And also, you, you'll notice a lack of masculinity when someone is scared to take a stand. When you stand for something, you stand against something. We notice increasingly the male is acting feminine in that they want to please everyone. They want to be nice. They never take a stand. It's okay to say, look, I don't, I don't like that, or I don't deal with that. It's okay. It's all right. I have friends, and we don't agree, and that's all right. You know, number one, he's a prenup is bad and good. Damn, everything's bad and good. Everything's yes or no. Everything's gray area. God, bro, can something be simple? Can you just call a spade a spade one time? You probably show him a spade. What is this? What is this? Well, that don't protect you enough. What I personally believe is something which I, I did research about this called a marriage contract. You may not like this, but please give this to me. This is feminine. You may like, you may not like this. I don't care what you like. Just say what it is. You don't need to pre, you don't need to, hey, hey, be nice. Listen to me. You may not like this, but just say what you're going to say. God damn it. You how many kids you have? Three. So let's say Ali married her man. And she said she, she ain't gonna make it in jail. Can we all make a prayer that Hafiz don't ever go to jail? Cause he ain't gonna make it. Can we make a prayer that he never gets locked up in the pen ever? He ain't gonna go well. They gonna be passing him around like a blunt. Promise you. Wanted three kids, right? Yeah. She gets married. She wants three kids. 
all of a sudden prior to the prior uh, to marriage okay, gotcha. he agrees she said she said she said honey i want three kids is that cool with you he said, of course mm -hmm. baby you want three kids we're gonna have three kids she's married five years into it hey when are we having our kid uh next year when are we having our kid uh next year it's year eight he's like i don't want any kids anymore should she stay in that marriage she he agreed and she had both agreed that what's your point here my boy good lord damn what is the point jesus and in your marriage you 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 agreed that we're gonna have sex let's say twice a week that's that's, the that's an agreement i'm just saying we that's a verbal contract we're, we're, we're agreeing that let me tell you why this is completely nonsensical it's nonsensical because number one and let me share with you some haitian proverb the haitians have a saying which is, constitution le papier, uh, le se fait, which is to say a constitution is paper, a bayonet is steel. Paper, which is to say a contract, may or may not be honored, whether you have a prenup or not, whether you have a contract or not, it's gonna be fought in the courts. Any businessman knows this. I have had employment contracts, people don't feel like it was executed the way they wanted it to be executed, you end up in court. Whether you had a contract or not. I've had partnership agreements. I've had business deals where it's there clear and black and white and people don't want to follow what is written. You end up in the courts. And that's why you have to arbitrate or go through a legal process. The contract is going to be honored because the other person is honorable. I repeat, contracts are honored because the other person is honorable. And the irony is that the more honorable the other person is, the less you need a contract. I repeat, the more honorable the other person is, the less you need a contract. So the irony is that the people who are most likely to abide by a contract, you damn near don't even need a contract to bind them. Now, a contract is reasonable to clarify each person's definition and perspective on a given thing or phenomena. Hey, I understand love to consist of these things, or I understand your role in this relationship to consist of these things, which is why you should marry people whom you share values with. The reason the assassin is so important is because we identify specifically and clearly what our values are, what our regular beliefs and practices are. So we know what it is and we can come together based on that. Historically, you married someone sharing your ethnicity, which is to say we might be the same race, we're both in the Negroid category, or both in the Mongoloid or Caucasoid racial category, then we share an ethnicity, we might both be Hindu, which would suggest that we're Indian, we share a religion, we share a history, we share a language, we share folkways, mores, etc. That means there are less things that are unpredictable. I know when you walk in the house, you take off your shoes. I know when Diwali comes around, we do this celebration. I know our families are gonna get along. We share these things that are explicit. In the modern era, with the breakdown of ethnicity, the breakdown of culture, and a lot of heterogeneity, you need clear values that are modern, like values put forward in the Sassin. You can actually read about it at www.thesassin.com slash about tells you what we're about. Now, I say all that to say this. When you're engaging in this modern dating, one black guy marries a white girl. Well, now we're lost because the black guy might be Muslim, the white girl might be atheist. Or the black guy might be Christian, the white girl might be Mormon. The black guy grew up in Bronx and the white girl grew up in Kansas. There's a lot of misalignments, not because these are bad people or good people, but because you have different cultures, you come from different regions, and America, unlike, say, a country like Singapore, which is very small, and, you know, we know what it is, we know what the culture is, it's tight-knit, it's small, it's easy to be tight-knit, whereas you have a massive country like America, you got a guy in New York is nothing like a guy in Mississippi, different accent, different way of being, speaking, thinking, living, different pace. So I say that to say this. The contract concept is useful in that case. It is actually not very useful in the sense of the law or protecting your assets. So anything he's about to say to that end is just not true. You're still going to get tied up in the legal system. It's going to be expensive. It's going to take a lot of time. If you come from a culture where we say we don't believe in divorce, well, now you've taken one thing off the table. You come from a culture where you say, we don't believe in using the American legal courts. We're going to take it to the SAS in arbitration, or we're going to take it to our imam or to our rabbi, and we're going to finish it there. 
then you've taken a lot of headache and a lot of financial strain off the table. That is more useful. That's why you stick to your own. That's why saints, Mary Lady Saints, people we share values with. What he's describing is basically going to get you entangled in that jungle that CGA has been in and is referencing. Oh yeah, by the way, baller alert. Shout out to Lil Cash Kid. He writes, nah, I can't just let that go by. Nobody, I repeat, nobody comes with the energy MDB does. That's right, because these guys are just talking for money. They're prostitutes dancing for money. They don't really believe. One thing you cannot doubt is, oh, I believe what I'm saying and I live it out. One of one, none to come. And if you haven't liked the video yet, you should be, you really should. You should be ashamed. It's the least you can do. Utmost respect to you, Mark, but I truly appreciate it. And the respect is mutual. Okay, on Cash App, we have Joseph's intuition. Shout out to Joseph. And we have another baller alert. Baller alert. J Hop sent $50. J Hop. J Hop, he said, listening from Baghdad, Iraq. Wow, that's intuition. beautiful. He in Baghdad, that's what's up. You know what? I might have to slide over to Iraq at some point. I, I've been in, you know, there many years ago, I was very interested to go, but at some point, I'm going to have to make a move over there. I do like the history. And uh, I have met a couple Iraqi girls. They were slores, though. It's crazy. I hope the ones over there are better, not better slores, but more moral. Anyways, thank you for the support. And shout out to the Saints around the world. Carrying on. Are we we, we get in at least, at least twice a week. <laughs> All of a sudden, she's like, I'm not in the mood anymore. She's like, oh, now, now. This boy is drawing this out. Man, his family is being aware of expectations on both sides. So therefore, there's family accountability. Because what's the problem in the West is there's no accountability. Like you say, if the wife. I, dude, we, we agree mostly on all of these things. Of you course. understand what's going on of here. Course, when you're course. talking about these marriages and business. Can you find out who his wife is? Hafiz. Yeah, find Hafiz's wife. Because if he's Nigerian and he's talking about the West, I want to see that he's married to a Nigerian woman. Let's see what, what he's really about. Contracts and family, yeah. this is where we agree. Yeah. And unfortunately, we get into the loss, into the romance and the feelings part of it, which everything can't be so robotic and so structured that you can't have any feelings and emotion. Yeah. So I'm trying to kind of... You know what? I will say that there was a, a major loss here because Coach Greg Adams has so much wisdom to bring him in on a panel where you have one harlot and then you have Hafiz and then you still have the host who also wants to talk. There's just not enough airtime to really hear out the more sophisticated and nuanced perspectives that Coach Greg Adams is qualified to share. And that is a, a real loss because I would like to hear more from the coach instead of having the camera switch back and forth. And why they got this weird purple background, I don't know. Um, but, you know, that's a side note. But anyways, it really should just be CGA, maybe Hafiz, and then the host should have a more limited role. But it seems like he's not even necessary because it's not like they're debating or cutting each other off. Can, I, can I add something to yeah, this? Go. See, this is the thing that experience offers that yeah. sometimes experience doesn't. So he talked about experience and, you know, being open minded to experiences. But a guy who has significant investment experiences has bumped their head as well yeah. they wouldn't be called bitter they would call be called experience mm -hmm. right but in this situation what people don't know what's behind that curtain when you go into court mm -hmm. and the love is lost and yeah. also the agree the agreements aren't being upheld with the marriage contract are piranhas one thing i want to say that is absolutely factual that cga just pointed out which is number one he says when the agreements are not being upheld yeah, yeah women are probably low key, especially when they're mad and bitter, uh, they're not about to abide by a uh, contract. They're about to abide by their upbringing and their true values, like what they were taught as a little girl, you heard me? So, or what's being enforced in their culture, th that is a greater society that they have submitted to and that they're trying to be a part of. So that's what you gotta rely on. And I've shared a story before, there's one young lady I dealt with and long story short, she was P.O. turbo mad. And uh, so she basically was like, hey, I'm done with you. Say that was on Thursday. Friday night, uh, Friday morning, I wake up and she was like, hey, your breakfast is downstairs. Did that mean she had forgiven me? Nah, she didn't. But if a man is in her home, she's going to whip up a meal, period. Those are values. She was raised like that. That's just what it is. That's not about to change because she's mad, sad or glad. That's what it is. So that's what you're really relying on with the woman is who is she really? 
The contract is not the woman. It's the woman that is actually the contract that you're really going to have to rely on. Take that to the bank. Um, Hafiz, I don't know who his wife is, and let me be clear that I'm not about to speak up on his wife, um, but let me just uh, pop this up real quick um, because uh, I I just want to see if he's, you know, and mind you, I think everyone's wife is is a a private matter. This is a random website. So uh, apparently this is his wife. Personally, I don't like to put my women on display, you know, shout out to the Muslims, shout out to the Jews, shout out to the Mormons, you know, shout out to the ones who know how to cover, tell a chick to cover her up. So I probably wouldn't have Shorty sitting in my lap in public. I certainly wouldn't post for a photo like that. I really, but baby, put your leg down. I don't need you. We don't need your leg in this picture, Shorty. Put your leg down and pull your dress down. Matter of fact, uh, I I wouldn't tell her, but ideally I'd be like, damn, could you put on a bigger dress? Good Lord. This ain't BET spring bling. But anyways. Um, he his name is Hafiz Bauku, and he's engaged to a woman named Sarah Fisher. Okay, so if your name is Hafiz Bauku, and her name is Sarah Fisher, and Fisher might be German in origin, the S C H is generally a German uh, formulation. I'm gonna go ahead and say I don't know that you've like really been sticking to your culture. It is a German name. And- Instagram pictures are from Germany. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying she's German. The last German. yeah, the last name might be German, but it's oh, German her IG is has a lot of German pictures. Yeah, like she traveled to Germany. I'm not saying oh, she's Okay, in got you, got you. So since becoming a Christian in his sophomore year of college, damn, that's a bit late to to find the Lord, my boy. Okay, but it's never too late. Hey, go ahead, bro. Um, his entire life has been devoted to sharing the good news of grace. Okay, okay, I'll come back to that. Shout out to Rob. He writes, this is real chutch. Dropping in the collection plate. Appreciate that. Hafiz doesn't understand that women are not, quote, men of their word. Ooh, talk to me. I like how you put that, right? He doesn't understand. And the reason he doesn't understand that is because he doesn't see a separation between the male and the female. And we observe in his femininity that he kind of identifies with them. And so he's the kind of, to really be equal not to say that we're not of equal worth, we are, but he's the kind that thinks 50 50 is how everything's gonna go. You're like, oh, I was on top half the time. Now, here, you get to be on top. You know, it's not quite right. Uh, let me finish that one. I'm sorry. And he writes, um, and won't abide by signed contractual words when she is scorned. Oh, that's absolutely the case. They're gonna operate based on their nature and their upbringing and the society that they are within and choose to submit to. And what are the other women in that society doing? What example are they giving? That's why we see OnlyFans is, is working is because the media is not shunning it. In the media, women are being glorified. So they're like, oh, it's not embarrassing. It's not bad. Oh, I'm going to go do it. I'm going to try to give me a bag. But if you were in Iran, you'd probably be less likely to want to do OnlyFans because you would disgrace your family and they would shun you. And then you would stop that behavior. Even if in your heart, you're really a harlot, you wouldn't bring it out. And some percentage of all human groups probably do have people who are criminals, harlots, and inclined to violence and sexual deviance. But a strong society is able to either eliminate them or get them to manage that urge and suppress it, or at least not display it in public so it spreads. Carrying on. You caught up? Yeah. Fantastic. In 2012, he founded the Urban Gospel Mission. God, this guy's really about it. And on, oh, it's online. Okay, he's less about it. An online community of resources for urban people. What are urban people? Okay. In order to bridge the gap between the gospel and the urban culture. So this man is a born again. All right. He enjoys working with his friends and blah, 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 blah. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. So this dude's a real, he's really into his Christian thing. Okay. And he's with Sarah Fisher. Okay. And... We don't know much about her. Oh, shout out. He, he used to play ball. Shout out to Hafiz. Okay. What to know about his family? Okay, here we go. So, wow. Hafiz was born to his parents, Kunte. For, for, for a second, I thought it was like Kunta Kinte. I was like, no way. His, his dad's name is like Kunta Kinte. I was like, that would be crazy. Um, not that there's anything wrong with the name, just the movie is, if you guys saw that clip from Roots, it's crazy. The OGs know what I'm talking about. But anyways, his father's name is Kunte, and uh, his mother's name is Bridget. 
Bauku, and they're from Staten Island, and, and New York is a hellhole. Uh, he has two siblings, Deji and Taira. His parents are extremely supportive. That's good. I believe that. Uh, he has kept his information private, and that's good. Good for him. That's smart. Okay. Okay. I'd be curious as to what religion his parents were. You know, I'm. You know, that, that's certainly of interest. But you know, shout outs. He seems like a, a good, wholesome fella. Um, not someone I would model myself after, but a good, wholesome guy. So shout out to him. Anyways, uh, we didn't hear much about the girl, but seems like she's not from the same culture. And it seems like he's diverged from the way of his parents, because obviously if you converted to Christianity at 19, your parents didn't raise you Christian. So he's diverged from the way of his parents, yet he references not being Western as though he's like sticking with his culture, but he's obviously not. It, it, I get it, though. I understand. I understand. Carrying on. Back to CGA. Sharks. They typically come in the form of lawyers, judges, yep. and people in that industry who make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. With that being said, once you go in that room, I'm one of the only people that have been in those rooms. It's a dark place. We call it. Okay, even when you're doing mail improvement stuff, because I think there's a difference between um, real mail improvement, because it has to improve the lives of men. Fitness, emotional health, spiritual growth. What are you doing that? That don't get views. And, and views in my comments would always talk about this. That, dang, the girl stuff gets 10x the views of the male improvement stuff. And and also when Fresh and Fit will tell you the same thing. When they do their finance stuff, they've always told me. I don't know if things have changed. They've told me when they... Yeah, this is, this is true. This is true. They do finance, dudes don't watch that, but they want to watch the girl stuff, right? Well, yeah. and look at the girls that they... Now, let me, let me blow your minds real quick, saints. Let me blow your minds. Hafiz speaks of a reality, which is to say that males are more interested in the content about females. How do you get them? How do you sleep with them? How do you dominate them? Now, what sense does it make for CGA to say I'm single, which is to say separate from a female, when all of the viewership on the internet and every bit of marketing you see, we use beautiful women to market cars, we use beautiful women to market a lot of luxury male items because when we can associate getting a beautiful woman with a shiny new car, people are going to be more inclined to get the car. So every indication by marketing and us exercising our nature through you know watching content circled around beautiful women, now what sense does it make for a guy to say I'm single as though that's a good thing, as though anyone is seeking that? No, what men are seeking is to maximize their ability to get women to influence that woman and to enjoy their life with the woman. You see, the challenge is that you got guys who don't know how to manage a woman saying, okay, MGTOW, I've had it, I'm single, I'm going my own way. Well, that's a complaint. What you really need is the guy who says, I can teach you how to get the woman and I can teach you how to manage the woman. And what's more, I could even teach you how to help her better. I don't know what the hell that was, that was crazy. And what's more is I can teach you how to help her better understand herself and also let her know what her role is as a woman and you know your role as a man and we can enjoy ourselves as a natural pair. Well, yeah, this, this makes perfect sense. Yeah. Guys don't really care too much about how to get the how to get rich content, the how to be fit content, the how to thrive content. Yeah, now nah, they trying to get laid. Yeah, that's what it is. That's factual. So that's how you know like it's all BS when guys are talking about going their own way. Nah, this is just this is just the front you put out cuz you can't get a chick. You're raging and lying. Married and he's a high value man and he's cheating on her. Hmm. And she comes to you in a sense like, "Dad, this is how I'm feeling. This is what's going on. Like, what do I do?" Well, as a, as I said, I can offer her some fatherly advice in the situation. Can you give us an example? No, 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 because what what tends to happen is People use this particular argument to try to see if I can change my position. No, the it's not even I, 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 I know, it's I know, just, but see, this is, very, this, is, this is a very, I, I know it's Because there's a lot of men who are fathers and they think about them. First off, shout out to uh, CGA because he's intelligently fielding this question and that comes from wisdom. But what I would have done is I would have told her, hey, love, you asked your question. Stop talking until I answer it, please. I would have probably said it nicer, but stop talking until I answer it. Because this is an unruly broad, and you can't tell she's unruly because she's been around weirdos who let her act wild, so you never see the conflict occur. But she's engaging a masculine male, CGA, 
And now we're about to see a little bit of conflict because when these broads are used to being around the softies, like her co-host, um, they being around these softies, you know, they start, you know, you know what I'm saying? They want to throw their weight around, even though they don't really have weight. They want to throw it around. Now she's going to try to attack CGA to see if she could fold him up like a lawn chair and treat him like old boy that's wearing the sneakers with no socks. No, I don't think he's about to go, with, go for it. Darius Campbellis writes, are you single? He wasn't paying attention, huh? He ain't been paying attention. Carry it all. Then they're like, wait, how do I, you know? Exactly. And that would be a realm of like, you know how many, like. The how she asked a question, but she's still talking. It's like, Shorty, are you answering your own question? You asked him a question, now you're talking. Shut up! She ain't had no house training, this one. A lot of men have daughters out there and maybe they don't know how to have that conversation or like how to seek Shut some up. Sort of comfort for a- Is it going to be a situation where she'd be more likely to listen? Mm. But anybody that's ever been a father and had young women, and of course I'm sure you have a father, and to my point, we probably saved a lot of men from being single fathers or mm -hmm. dealing with men on the other hand, um, because they have a lot of places to turn position of what I would do. That, that way, then you say, oh, are you telling this guy not to no, marry your daughter no, no. and to cheat on your... No, 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 yeah. because my daughter, same way as I wouldn't date my daughter, but I could date people in that daughter's range once she's 20, 25, 30. So, my so it's not the you, same thing. Gotcha. Do you want your daughter to get married, yes or no, or are you not going to answer that question? She can get married if she would do, like do you, to. Do you want her to? I don't think it's necessary in the stage. No. Uh, so you, you, for a woman? For a woman. Absolutely not. Okay. You don't really? think it's necessary for a woman to get married? Why? Uh, Western marriage. Are they brain dead? He just said, I don't think it's necessary. And they all like, you don't think, like he just said, I don't think it's necessary. Why do they keep repeating that? That's when you know you're dealing with brainwashed clowns because you said something as clear as day, but they don't seem to understand. Escape Key, have you ever seen that name? You never seen him send intuition? Mm -mm. He telling me what to do though. Like I'm his employee. Like he paying me to do a service. That's crazy though. Is he asking something for nothing? Like where they do that at? He said, "Don't skip saying like. Wh why are you telling me what to do? Like it'd be one thing if you made a request. I mean, like damn. Like let me teach right now. He right. This is the good part. Good to who? You see, the thing is. As a man, don't ever ask something for nothing, number one. And number two, you would have learned this from Napoleon Hill. You always have to give someone a reason to do something. For example, if I see a woman and I want her to cook me up a meal, I'm trying to leverage something to get that to happen. You heard me? Like, if I see a woman, I can tell she's attracted to me. I'm like, okay, she might whip up this meal for your boy. She feeling me. You heard me? She liked the swag. She liked the vibe. I could get something done with her. But if there's no vibe and I say, hey, cook me up a meal, She's like, why? No one does things just because you said it. Like, that's the problem with the generation is they haven't figured out how the world works. Shouldn't you just be thankful that you're paying zero dollars to get this information and entertainment? I'm just wondering, like, damn, like, it'd be one thing if it was Mitchell McCauley, like, hey, uh, don't forward this part. I would think, okay, Mitchell, I know to be intelligent. He might be advising me on something smart. Mitchell, I know to be respectful and wise. He might be doing something that could be a favor to me. There's rapport and relationship. I don't know Escape Key. I don't know your name. You got a, a Spider-Man photo? Like, come on, bro. Like, I damn near feel like it's disrespectful. Like, what you giving orders to me for? The Okay, he said understood. God damn. We have Moon Bentley said tuition. Shout out to Moon Bentley. Like, like... It's just crazy because I'm just trying to think in real life. If you were standing next to me in real life, would you advise me on what to do? Probably not. That's just what's weird to me. It's like you, you go to 7-Eleven and make Slurpees all day and then you start telling bosses what to do. With no respect. Like I don't even know his name. It's just bothering me. I'm sorry. It's bothering me. It'd be one thing if it was like Donovan Stevens. Like, oh, damn, I know his name. He messed with me. It was Lil Cash Kid. Oh, he messed with me. It was Vapor Saint. Oh, that's one of my people, but... Dang, am I wrong? Like, somebody let me know if I'm wild. I might be wilding. I might be wilding. Okay. Look at the, oh, uh, we got an incel here. Is this an incel? This man says MGTOW man are frustrated. I think he, nah, his English, English must not be his first language. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah.
Now, the, what I'm trying to emphasize to you guys is that I teach hierarchy. I'm a real believer in hierarchy. I'm a real believer in relationships. And I'm also a believer in like, figure out what the flow is before you start accidentally going against the flow. It's like, hierarchy. You guys see when I had Coach Greg Adams on my platform, I treat him with respect. It's my elder. Hierarchy. It's my elder. You know, if I see him, I'm going to treat him with respect and hierarchy. Right now, if I speak against something he said, it's in us having radically different views. But I engage him as a man. It's my elder. I'm going to have to respect. Hierarchy. Carrying on. Matter of fact, um, I'll give you guys time to send in your thoughts, questions, comments. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> I'll send in your thoughts, questions, comments as we wind down. It's just that for me, it's about you. If you don't have $4 to your name to send in, like, hey, Marquette, stop at this part, or hey, Marquette, look at this timestamp. If you don't have $4 to your name, you should not be telling me what to do. Not because money is a definer of who you are, but because if you don't have $4, you're in such a bad position that you shouldn't even be on the stream, probably. You should probably be like studying, trying to learn a skill, or working a job. So if you don't have $4 to send in to get your point across, you should be doing something more valuable or profitable to you. Or if you don't want to send $4, that means it's not important enough for you to actually be serious about it. So then you should be silent about it. If you're not serious about it, be silent about it. And if I don't know you, it's like I do feel disrespected when you start shouting out like directions to me. Like, bro, I don't know you. And Nine out of nine, you probably got, got acne on your, but you're a kid. You're still in the age where you have acne on your face, like telling a grown man what to do. I talk to you like I would talk to you in real life. I see in my comments every now and then people are like, oh, but would he say that in real life? Yes. Yeah, everything I've ever been on the internet, I also am that in real life. If you approach me with kindness in real life, I, I approach you with kindness. If you approach me with anything else, I'm going to go the whole mile. And I've done that my whole life. I have a book called The Black Box. You can read about my real life. So I say that to say, like, damn, it, it just annoys me to sit here and, like, have somebody talk like that. Which is to say, like, I'm done. Shout out to Joshua. He writes, Peace to the Saints. Thank you for the great analysis. Quote, untamed emotion is the enemy of performance. End quote. True story. And so, like, guys like uh, the gentleman, and, and, you know, let this be a lesson for everybody you're not clear on what's going on in the world. I'm not here for me, I'm here for you. I have a tour scheduled. I'm on holiday. What I earn through Super Chats, yeah, I could keep on going and keep earning Super Chats. I literally don't care. That's why I'm going to end the stream, because I don't care. I come on believing that I'm teaching people who are actually learning lessons that will positively impact their relations with their family, with their woman, with their life. I'm serious about what I'm saying. Do not interrupt me playing games. Show me my due respect. Okay, on PayPal, Wilson said, thank you for the laugh. Escape key did it to himself. Right, and I don't even think he was being malicious. I think he was just being thoughtless. And, and I hate to be so vehement about it because he just might not have been ever taught any better. Like sometimes we're in restaurants, nice restaurants, and I see a dumb broad chewing uh, with her mouth open and talking while she's chewing. And I just like, oh, that's so nasty. But in reality, maybe no one told her, but it's hard to believe that you went a whole lifetime and nobody said, hey, that's disgusting. Stop doing that. Okay, we have Darius said, May we gather more wisdom as you analyze more of this clip. May we gather more wisdom. It, it, yeah, it's possible you would. Okay, Alex sent tuition. Thank you, Alex. Money mindset. Shout out to Alex. The saint even giving game from petty comments. Insight on every level. Don't ask something for nothing. Real lesson. A lot of us listening deeply. And you know, I, I want to emphasize on this piece real quick. Not only do I not ask something for nothing, there have been times in which I deserve something from people and I don't even ask it if they're not offering it. There have been people who owe me 
but I don't even ask it if they're not offering it. Hey, he came back and said, I apologize. I was completely out of line. You are right, Saint. And young man, I don't want to disrespect you. I just, and when you get some gray hairs on your beard, metaphorically, um, you're going to want people to address you in a certain way. I remember when I was a young boy, I used to wonder why, you know, older men want to be addressed in a certain way. And it's because when you've had a certain amount of experience and you've seen the world spin a lot of times and you've done things, you know who you are, right? Like, you know the level of respect you deserve. And when someone doesn't meet you on that level, it is something that bothers you. And you may understand as you age, but in my case, it's like, bro, I didn't, I didn't seen and done a lot. Like, I don't expect to be talked to like the little homie. Uh, James Green, right? oh, baller alert, writes, went to this girl's house and she had a lot of plumbing issues. I hope he's talking about literally not her body. Oh my, hope that's not a metaphor. I fixed one problem. This man is a handyman. And we've been flirting the last couple of days. Is it a good idea to make a move on? Uh, bro, go ahead, man. Do what you do. Now, the only thing that is a problem is if it's going to mess up your money. Because here's the thing. If you went there as a plumber and you fix some of her plumbing problems and she still has more pr plumbing problems that you can get paid to fix, go ahead and fix those problems for an appropriate fee. No deals, no discounts. And once you've completed that, then go ahead and lay down the real pipe. You heard me. Let her know why they call you the plumber. Carrying on. I heard DJ Academics is also a plumber. <laughs> hey, did you guys see that clip of DJ Academics when he's literally beating off on a live? It might sound crazy. He, it's a real clip. I might have to show it one day if he act up again. If he act up again. You caught up? I caught up. It sounds like the people want me to carry on. We have limited time, but you can carry on. We do have limited time. What do you recommend? I recommend you can give it 15 more minutes. Okay, because if you'd have said let's dip, they'd have been all mad at you in particular. You see how I set you up for that? Yeah. All right, let's go. So send in your thoughts, questions, comments now because we are ending in 15 minutes. Right, because I, I got a tour. I, I'm, they think I'd be playing games when I say, like, I have better things to do than to deal with BS. I, I, I think they think I'm the other YouTubers who are sitting in their damn basement all day. I think they think that sometimes, that I'm one of these little rascals. That's why I get so annoyed. It's like, God damn. Hustle or nothing must know the video you're talking about because he said that was hilarious. Please show it. It was hilarious. And the funny thing, too, is like I'm not even asking for extra respect. Like, just damn, can I get, just get the appropriate amount? Like, don't even give me no extra. Just give me the appropriate just amount. like the video. Subscribe. Unless you were looking out for something in the future, potentially if you want to have children. So if she said, hey, I'm looking to get married. I want to have kids. I'd probably say the best content context would be to get married but that doesn't mean get married to anyone mm -hmm. you see what i mean there right. are ways that yeah. i can level this do i want her to get married yes or no well who is she marrying when yeah, where how long yeah. see, see i don't like that it's like bro either you you believe in marriage or you don't believe in marriage it's like yes i want her to get married or no i don't and if i was cga on brand i'd like no i don't want her to get married for this reason um, so eh, eh, it's a little bit of backsliding and they were trying their best to get on the backslide. They try to like look at it from 30 different angles to getting the backslide. I think I'll add to that. And I hope you, I, I don't mean to offend you. There's no God in marriage in the United States. So that's kind of misleading and people will <laughs> shout out to CGA. He said, I don't mean to offend you in this, but I'm going to say what I got to say. Look, I wouldn't even preface it. I'm going to just say what it is. Advice that benefits men simultaneously benefits women. One, one more thing I'll add to that, and I hope you, I, I don't mean to offend you. There's no God in marriage in the United mm. States, so that's kind of misleading. And people will find that out if your marriage is destroyed. You go back to your pastor and you say, hey, my marriage is being destroyed. He has no power over Ooh. that because it is a state agreement. Ooh. So I will Talk bring to you him. back to make sure you understand, and I counsel men. There's no God in marriage. Well, That's been gone. Well, well, Listen, well, it was an no, old idea. It's absolutely gone unless you live in an American true. South. So, so you, most people on the West Coast, many people in the East Midwest, there's no God in marriage. Mm. So well, we break know that this. down. That's what do you mean? There's no God and, in marriage. There's no God in marriage. That was the dumbest host question I've ever heard. Break that down. CGA basically said one plus one is two. And then the host was like, break that down. That was it a breakdown. Good Lord. Shout out to Chalk T. He writes, hey, Mark, what? I live in Vegas and want to start training. Could you refer me to a good boxing gym out here? Peace of the Saints. That's a tough one, bro. That's a tough one. Look, um, check out C 
you know, I'm a, I'm a DM you. Can you DM me on IG and I, I'm going to send this recommendation back to you because there's a little bit of context with it. Send me a DM. Just say, hey, Mark, could I send a super chat about this question? I'm going to DM you back. Okay, we have Xavier said we still going. Word to Big Bird. So people get married. One mm-hmm. of the things that they will do is they will seek counsel of the church. And then as such, the guys will give them guidance and it will be biblical principle. Oh, However, right they will say we can't do anything until you sign this state-sponsored agreement mm. with family law context. All right. They're not going to have a Bible in there. They're not going to have a Bible. And see, he brings up an important point, which is if you're actually a religious person, your marriage really only needs to be valid in the eyes of the Lord. And so you might get married within your religious institution, your church, your mosque, your temple, what have you. And you do not need to get the legal paperwork because your marriage is valid in the eyes of the Lord and you've went through the appropriate religious processes. You see women, you'll have a clear sense of if they trust you, if they believe in you, if they actually view the state as your superior and want to use the state to control you based on if they're willing to get married with or without paperwork. If a woman requires paperwork and you're both citizens of the same country, she don't really trust you or believe in you. She's using the safety net of the law, which is gonna be her weapon against you, my friend. Conversely, if the woman, or for example, if the woman lives in a different country, you might have to get the paperwork just to bring her to your country. Of course, I would prefer not to. I should, hey baby, I go visit you every six months. My, I got a six month visa, I'm gonna visit you every six months. Um, but the fact is the women want that piece of paperwork so that they can use the law against you. So coach and I are similar in that we view the government as fairly wicked. Men are disadvantaged in the legal system with regards to family courts. Uh, But I do believe in the concept of marriage upon a man's word or upon a man's religion, not upon the state. And he and I might be aligned there, I don't know. But with him saying that he's single, I would think that we're actually not aligned because him being single single sounds a little bit more MGTOW-like to me. So I think in that way, we're philosophically different. Okay, real quick for the Chalk Tea guy, I believe he's new, I've not seen him before. Okay. Members on Patreon and the Sassin.com, we do announce local workouts. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. California drive in too for those. Absolutely. We have a lot of workouts for the Saints who live in Saint City. So if you are a member, you that is a part of your membership, one of the benefits, and we highly recommend that you you join us if you're in Saint US City. Bar and oh yeah, we get it in. Yeah. And Kevin's intuition on Cash App. Shout out to Kevin. Bible in that divorce court, the judge is not gonna ask you, do you like God? And what about God in your marriage? There will be no context to that. Mm-hmm. And such as mm-hmm. such, what is the overriding principle here? Does he your have a marriage point there, is state funded, no, not God like, funded. He just made a, a random point. That I didn't make it random. I told you that, that so, this so will offend first, you. Was I, I, and what it's did now I say? offended you. What did I say? No, it didn't offend me. You're just wrong. Let me, let me say, but I'm wrong. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me finish. Asking, oh, see, this is the problem with religious people right here is that their religion is a belief. It is not a logic. And... A mature man can understand there are things I believe, can't prove, but believe that you might not believe and I can respect the difference. And when you say that maybe my religion is not real, I I can respect your opinion and it doesn't get me angry. Hafiz is offended and hurt right now. He about to get real Christian, evangelical, holy roller, emotional, right? And he already has because he's already went straight to being unreasonable. He said, quote, he just made a random point random to suggest that what CGA said does not relate to the current topic, which is not true. The current topic is marriage, and CGA said that religion has not been a major factor in marriages in America, which is factually true. In fact, religiosity in America has been on rapid decline. So CGA is sound in his arguments, and he is completely germane to the current topic. Hafiz is actually lying and he is emotional in the wrong way. There's nothing wrong with having passion, but there's a lot wrong with when your mind stops working correctly and you start lying because you mad. You mad. No, no, let, right. me, let me finish. Let me, there's let, no let me, God let in, me the, in the marriage in let the United States. Let me finish and you can talk. Let me finish. No, no, talk. hold for a second. Let me, no, let, me, let me finish. Are you going to say let me, let me, there's no finish? God in the marriage just, in the United just, States? Just, First off, Hafiz thought he was bossing up. Let me, let me, let me finish and you could talk. Let me finish. And then CGA was like, I'm not boss back up on you. So CGA bossed up and kept talking. And then Hafiz appealed to a higher authority. Adam, are you going to tell him to stop? <laughs> he called the white man. Adam, tell him to stop. I want to talk. 
<laughs> Hafiz, they caught the white man. Oh, did you finish your point. You're saying there's yeah, yeah. no there's no God in marriage in the United States. Correct. Got it. That Hafiz. was his point. So I can, now now I'm gonna talk. So Hafiz, mad as hell. <laughs> I made a point and I said, if your truth aligns with God, mm -hmm. oh, that goodness. truth is most powerful. I'm done with you, Hafiz, because number one, most people don't believe in God. You could show me a chick wearing a niqab, a chick wearing a hijab. You could show me a, a Jewish Orthodox woman wearing a wig because it's a part of her religion. You can show me a Jehovah's Witness, a Mormon. Most of them do not believe in their religion or their book. They're within what's called a culture, and their religion is more culture than it is religion. And one of the clear uh, indications of this is that when we see people who really believe in their religion, it terrifies us. When we see a uh, Sheikh Osama bin Laden, it terrifies us. Like, whoa, that boy really believed. When we see somebody say they're going to strap a bomb and they're going to go like, you know, put in some work for the Lord, we're like, whoa, these boys is really taking that book seriously. I was just reading it on Sunday. They reading it every day. So we really, for the most part, people who say they believe in God, they don't believe in God. They call themselves a Christian. They ain't really a Christian. They just use that to recognize others who have similar inclination, but they don't really believe in their religion. We lying. They lying. Nah, nah, they lying. Because I tell you what, most Christians don't know the Bible. I know the Bible way better than most Christians. And if Hafiz is a Christian, and this woman's a Christian, that, that photo where you saw her leg all out, I don't think that kind of aligns with the, the modesty that Christianity promotes. Furthermore, if Hafiz is a Christian, uh, I'm wondering, does his wife cover her hair when she prays? Because that's not a Muslim thing. That's actually a Christian thing as well. Yeah, it says that in the Bible. Uh, I don't think Hafiz is actually really about that Christian life in terms of understanding the Bible. I think he more so just like really got soaked into like, the love of Jesus, which is a message of man, not a message from the Bible, which comes from the divine creator that he, he says he believes in. I don't think he really about that. I think he lying. That's what I said. If your truth aligns with God, meaning the word that you speak aligns with God, those words are the most powerful. Then he made a point saying there is no God in marriage. So, so first, that's a semantic thing because God is everywhere. Whether God... Wait, can you give me a scripture? What are you talking about? God is everywhere. This is what you'll often hear from sophist and religious persons or Kanye West. They'll say things that don't make any sense. You don't really understand what they're talking about. They'll never reference scripture or Quran. Uh, like, God is everywhere. So if I pull out my meat and start beating it, God is my meat. God is everywhere. Like God is here watching me beat off to Pornhub. Like what are you talking about when you say God is everywhere? What does that mean, Hafiz? You sound like an imbecile. And these are the kind of people that are the most dangerous in religion, and they push people away from religion because they don't make any sense. I choose this to supervene in things or not. I, am, I will never be the person that says God is not here. I will never be the person that says God is not present here. Could we argue that, that is God blessing every American Western marriage? Of course not. Of course, God is not blessing every American, but God is definitely in my parents' marriage. So when you say there is absolute statements, there is no God in marriage. So that's weird. If God's blessing your parents' marriage, why didn't God bless them to be a Christian? Are your parents going to hell because they're not Christians? Because obviously they weren't good Christians because you didn't become a Christian until age 19. Like none of this adds up. He's making up things. He's not re referenced scripture at all. He's just saying what he feels. And this kind of feeling is poison. Baller alert. Shout out to Carlo. He writes, would like to see you both again. Peace to the saints. What's that mean? Oh, you're talking about me and CJ? Or... Okay. Feel free to uh, clarify. We'll, we'll keep an eye out, Carlo, and we appreciate the support. He's been consistent. Marriage. False. They're correct. There is no God in some marriages. There is no God in most marriages in regards to by being there. This boy is a real psychopath because notice the whole freaking interview, he's been dead, boring, and monotone. And now you got that vein popping out of his neck like, you know, he's about to blow a gasket right now when he's talking about the Lord, which is actually... Ironically, he accused CGA of being off topic. No, you're off topic because now you're going through like theology, but we're supposed to be talking about marriage, legal marriage, which is how it occurs in the West, in America, the country you live in, my boy. 
So it's like, bro, you tripping right now. You so thrown off. You're out of control. And you can see this look on his face is a thinking look. He's thinking right now. But his brain is insufficient, so his emotion is overwhelming his intelligence right now. And as the saint shared earlier, as Marquette Devon Burden states, untamed emotion is the enemy of performance, and he is performing poorly. No, God mean that God's not blessing it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're saying that God Look is not CGA. blessing what's happening in most marriages, that is a true statement. But to say there is no God in marriage. Why? Please stop making them ugly faces. I swear for God. I swear for God. Look at this face. This is the devil. This face is not God. Look, <laughs> I swear that's the devil right there. <laughs> How are you going to be talking about God making that face? <laughs> he looked like Beetlejuice off of Howard Stern. <laughs> look, y'all see the, see the youngest don't know who I'm talking about. They don't know who Beetlejuice or Howard Stern is. <laughs> I gotta pull it up for you. I got to. I swear I got to. It's necessary. Y'all just remember this face he making right now. Okay, while you're pulling it up, he said that green suit is extra player. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints in a real way. You dig? And he came right back. It is green with the gold buttons. You heard me? Green for the money, gold for the honey. Carry it on. Look. He said another cash up right after that. He said tuition. Shout out. Appreciate it, Saint. Now look at this face. Now, number one, he got the nerve to be talking about the Lord making this ungodly face. This face is ungodly. This is Satan in his face. It's Satan. Uh, now check this out. This is who he actually looked like right now. It's crazy. I'm like, dang, Quet, you got him. You got him. You caught that. He looked just like Beetlejuice from Howard Stern. <laughs> look, look, let me uh, zoom in on one of these ones where <laughs> he looked just like Beetlejuice. Tell me he ain't making the same face. Tell me he ain't making this face right now that Beetlejuice making. Boy, look just like Beetlejuice. Oh, oh, I got to enlarge it. Y'all can't even see that right there. There you go. That one, the, here go the face that, it, that he was making. <laughs> oh, yeah, you saw me trying to find it. There it is. That's the face that Hafiz is making right now. That one right there. That is the devil. That is not God. There's no way that's God. Hafiz, mad as hell right now. Okay, can I get a little bit more? Just let me let me just finish with Hafiz real quick. Marriages, period, that is a false statement because God is in my marriage and God is also in my parents' marriage. And I will continue to say, when it comes to even understanding that... Just by the way, you guys know he's just tripping right now because if you rewind that back, he, he repeated the same words and the same point like six times. God is in my marriage. God is in my parents' marriage. It's like a... He's like in a cult or something. He's just like repeating it like it's a seance. It's creepy. Ideas of God. God gives human beings free will. First off, why are we in a theological discussion? I thought we were talking about marriage. God gives human beings free will. What does that have to do with anything? It is strange, my boy. It's a very simple concept. You can freely sin or you can freely obey. And God, like a good father, if you want to touch the stove, you can touch the stove. I'm done with bruh. Okay. Saints, I'll give you a little bit of time to send in your last thoughts, questions, comments as we wind down. Because uh, God gives us free will. My marriage is blessed. My parents' marriage is blessed. You bald head. I hate you. You bald head. <laughs> hey, look. Look. Bald head brothers one. <laughs> Simps zero. Uh, put this one in the books. Uh, w for uh, Coach Greg Adams. Shout out to Coach Greg Adams. He represented himself very well. He represented his way and his uh, philosophy, his brand beautifully. I'm so happy to hear that this uh, interview has been making the rounds on the internet. A good gentleman, and I want to see him continue to prosper. Um, if, if Shall we just go? Or should we give him time? You're shaking your head. I already said we're going. Okay, all right. Saints, I'm sorry. I got to go. Peace to the saints.